Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Dark Art Society podcast. Let's see the day that this is playing for the first time. Premiering would be October 25th. And since Halloween is on a Tuesday this year, uh, this is the Halloween episode. And today I've got a great guest on and uh, that guest would be Eric Pickers from ToxicTunes.com. Toxic Tunes is his uh, empire of crazy artwork that he creates. I'm a huge fan. I've got a shirt on. Um, it's funny because I had his shirt on yesterday. That's that's what a fan I am. I had his shirt on, one of his shirts on yesterday during the interview, but it was cropped in too tight, and um, so it didn't show up. And I didn't even think to tell him it. I didn't even notice it until after because most of my shirts are <laughs> Eric Picker shirts. So uh, anyway, I thought he'd be a great guest to have on for Halloween because he's a huge Halloween freak. Uh, he's an older dude like me. We come from the same era of uh the monster kid era of the 70s i guess it would be um late 60s early 70s is when the boom was and uh yeah so he is going to we have you know just a regular interview like normal but also he shows us his collection of halloween stuff He's got so much cool Halloween stuff. It's amazing. I'm very jealous. He makes puts my collection that you see behind me. Puts mine to shame. Mine's way more chaotic. He's got like, well, you'll see. You'll see. He, he's got tons of cool stuff. And he uh, gives us a tour throughout the interview, which is great. <clears throat> so I'm going to say if you're listening uh, to the audio podcast, I would suggest that you also watch the video podcast on YouTube, if you get a chance. It's Dark Art Society podcast on YouTube. Uh, because while there there's plenty of chat <clears throat> and talk and conversation, there's also a lot of him talking about things and showing them. And um, so this one definitely would would uh, uh, benefit from having the, the video version of the podcast. So check that out. And the YouTube channel is going well, actually. It's growing slowly but surely, and there is a community on, on YouTube now that's kind of forming around the Dark Art Society podcast, and we get together every Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and uh, that's when the show of each week premieres, and there's a live chat, and oftentimes I can get the artist from the podcast who's, who's been interviewed in the chat, so it's myself and the artist from the interview in the live chat and then people chat and it's really cool. So <clears throat> check it out, check it out. I'm trying to get uh, more people into the video version of the podcast. It's, it's, it's cool. I like it. I prefer watching podcasts myself. Um, but you know, I know a lot of people listen while they're working and painting and stuff, which is good also. Uh, let's see. So that's coming up. Uh, what's been going on? I have not been very Halloween-y this year. It's been so hot. It's been hard to kind of get into the vibe. But, um, you know, it's it's always Halloween for us. So we have a different perspective than than most people, I think. People that, dark artists and people that kind of do Halloween all year. But I've just been working on commissions, these little study commissions. Um, you can see a Weeper Cenobite back here and a Gary Oldman Dracula. I've got to do a couple more shinings. I did some study commissions for my taxes, which I got paid, kind of. I mean, I was able to pay a large, pay a large chunk, but I, I had to set up a payment plan for the rest of it. So, um, But it's taken care of, so that's good. Uh, so I've been just working on stuff that I um, people were kind enough to pay me up front for. So I'm going to get that stuff done this week. I also have this... This uh, divine feminine sculpture I'm doing based on that painting I did, divine feminine, and I hope hope I will definitely be yes I will be releasing that for the holidays. Uh, what else? You know what else happened? My uh, my uh, tool poster just dropped the other day, yesterday, and um, so that's based uh, on a, a painting I did called the Awakening. So that's on the new the Vancouver show of the Tools Vancouver show. My artwork's on the poster. That was pretty cool. 
And I also have prints of that. I just released prints of that image, the original image on uh, my website, Chetzar, my web store, chetzar.pick chetzar.bigcartel.com and I'm selling uh, limited edition prints of that um, what else what else I know there's there's just so much going on always um, had to do a new mold of the one of my frames the mold died so I had to make a new mold that's pretty much it I guess um, if you want to support this podcast please do so at patreon.com slash dark art society and you could join for as little as a dollar a month $12 a year. It's cheap. If everybody who listened just paid $12, uh, $1, $1 a day, uh, $1 a month or $12 a year, that would be really helpful uh, if you can afford it. That's what keeps the podcast going. Um, let's see. So, yeah, if you want to check out my stuff, my daily updates and all that, you can go to patreon.com slash chetzar. And uh, I've been showing lots and lots of in-progress stuff. And everybody, you know, for example, these these uh, limited edition prints I just dropped of The Awakening. I've announced that already on my Patreon. So those people get first chance to get the print. So if you if you join my Patreon, even at the dollar level, you get clued in on when the, when the drops are coming before anybody else. So that's why a lot of my stuff sells out and, and people in the general public who aren't part of the Patreon don't get studies and, and stuff when I drop them because uh, the Patreon people get it first. So it's a small price to pay. Um, okay. And also if you join at the $5 level on the dark art society, Patreon, you get a $20 discount code for, Skull Shop, our sponsor. Whoop. That was one of them. Uh, S-K-U-L-L-S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. They make amazing replica skulls, and I love them. And, uh, yeah, so if you join at the $5 level or higher, you get a 20% discount code. And let me tell you, those skulls are worth it. They're really great. All my skull paintings have been... Uh, the reference has been Skull Shop Skulls. That's how good they are. That's all I use. Uh, okay. Also, if you join the Patreon, you get your name read on the show. And this week we have new members. Let's see. Mm, Kevin McGinnis. I don't know if I read that one last time already. But if, if I did, oh well. Um, Jamie Burton. Thank you, Jamie. Oops. And Can Man. Can Man, thank you. Appreciate your support. You're making it happen. Uh, I guess that's it. Let's get on with it. This is a super fun episode. I uh, can't wait for you to see Eric's collection. It's awesome. Go to ToxicTunes.com also and uh, check out his... Um, his, his stuff. He has amazing t-shirts and all kinds of merch. Uh, toxic, T-O-O-N-S dot com. Anyway, here we go. Hope you enjoy the show and I hope you have a great Halloween. Hello, Eric. Hey, shit. How's it going? <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy oh, Halloween. Let me, my, <laughs> let me take my real face off. Oh, <laughs> let me take this face off. Oh, no. Maybe I should leave that. <laughs> three layers. <laughs> yeah. It's a three layered pig or See if I can get this one off. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. It's just this month flew by, man. I know it's so bizarre. It sucks. Like I was just staring at my roof right here because sometimes I lay on the floor uh, and I'm uh, looking up there and I'm like, man, why? It's already almost over. I know. I don't even feel like I started doing anything. I yet. know. You want to, you want to savor it, and then it goes too fast. It's, it's like, and we're, but at least we're kind of living this life throughout the whole year. Yeah. But still, it's like the weather. And I usually, I usually start like September first, like really 
pushing what I'm selling for Halloween. So mm-hmm. usually by October 1st, anyways, I feel like Halloween's over. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yes, but this month, it does definitely feel like it's going super fast. Yeah, I know. It's a bummer. Plus, I don't know. How old are you? I just turned 61 like a few days ago. I'm going to be 56 uh, uh, next month. Damn. Doesn't it suck getting old? <laughs> it sucks, man. <laughs> we're I mean, al- it, it, we're alive though. It's, it's great because, like, I mean, even Norman wrote this, and I feel this way. Like, being an artist in pretty much everything that I have in my room or have been inspired by has kind of become my art. And I, I don't know. I feel pretty much like that kid that was like. 12 to 17 years old yeah like all the time except physically yeah that's the weird thing physically, I feel like an 80 year old what's that physically i feel like an 80 year old <laughs> that's the weird thing though about aging is like you know you still i, I don't feel yeah i, I feel like mm, i don't know i i feel about 30 mental, yeah. mentally yeah totally you know and and it just you know you just your body keeps falling apart and, uh, I feel as old as my iPhone and my Windows 5 or whatever I use. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, iPhone I uh, feel as old six. as these cockroaches though. <laughs> Man, you got so much cool stuff. We're going to we're, we're going to cockroaches. <laughs> so, the last two Saturdays I've been going to a friend's home haunt out here mm-hmm. and uh I've been wearing this witch costume and then I bring my little pail. Uh, and I, I've been scaring people, but then I brought these cockroaches, and then I, I would say, "Want to see Grandpa eat some cockroaches?" Not, not me. I'm not Grandpa, <laughs> but he has like a, a hanging vampire that talks, and its mouth moves. So I like stick the cockroaches in his mouth, <laughs> and it looks like he's eating them. <laughs> but everybody enjoys it, and and I don't know. Most of the other people there try to do like startle scares yeah we're, we're not where, yeah yeah we're not in i'm the more of a scares. psychological i'm just gonna stare at you and creep yeah, you out it's the creeps funny yeah yeah it's the creepy stuff it's not the jump scares jump scares are like no. easy cheap it's the creepy yeah. stuff is, is is where it's at i've always felt totally. that way i remember and there everything was... in my room is like well i don't know you know me my stuff is creepy but it's funny yeah yeah fun. absolutely yeah yeah for sure so so yeah there's the humor and the fun it's fun too yeah your work is fun and um fun 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 i mean yeah and and you know this is a, the fun this is like our christmas this is like our christmas totally. this like, is, look at this guy yeah i love it so this i love wow. that it's in the style it's in the style of the stuff that we grew up with that kind of 70s so, yeah stuff you well, know here's what i based or 60s it on. 60s 70s yeah the, Except I didn't quite get the the colors the same, but That's I tried to. That's great, though. Yeah. And um, so Leia, our nine year old, she came home a couple Halloweens ago with like a a mask they gave him at school with a popsicle stick. So I thought, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to put it in this year's trick or treat bag. So yeah. Basically, you would get that. You cut it out and stick a popsicle stick and put in it with it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're like you're like keeping the the Halloween spirit alive single handedly. I think more than anybody I know, more than anybody well, I know. I keep telling everybody when I when I pass away, I'm probably gonna haunt the streets on Halloween. <laughs> I'll, I'll find a like ghost hearse and I'll just drive around and play like old like Halloween music <laughs> from like the 50s and 60s. That sounds so fun. I, I was gonna. I you know how you you said you dressed as a you dre- you have a witch costume. Yeah. I, oh wait, I, I'll show you. It. Yeah. Well, here's here. Let me show you. Okay. I I, I have I have to tell you about a, a a person that used to dress up like a witch on my street. But show me first. Okay. Well, this isn't the mask I've been wearing, but I. So do you remember that that um, commercial from the seventies with something manner something manner masks. It, 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 I think it's a local Chicago shop. Hmm. So it had this creepy ass witch mask. So I asked my friend Aaron Lewis, I'm like, hey, do you know who made this mask? And he goes, oh, I think that's Zagoni Masks where I where I work. And he sent me a picture. And so they had this. Oh, this, yeah. This, this one you hang on the wall, but watch. Let's see if I can do this. Put it over 
my face. That's awesome. <laughs> this work? It, That's great. It almost looks. It almost looks exactly like that commercial's picture. It's really? So <laughs> yeah. It's, it's great. It's great. I I, I had a uh, uh, when I when I was growing up on my street. You know, Halloween was the the time of year for me. Halloween night, especially, it was just the best holiday. There was. I remember one year down the street. There was this man who would dress up like a witch. He had a, a black uh, witch outfit and a black hat, kind of classic, you know, green skin. Yeah. And he would, he had a little brick retainer wall and he would just creep back and forth, walking back and forth on the wall. <laughs> and that was all he did. And it was so cool. And he wasn't in, there was no light on him. He was like totally in the dark, just creeping, walking back and forth. And it's just like, it was so cool and creepy and weird. So much better than if he would have went yeah. and jumped out yeah, at people. Totally. You know what I mean? It was just like, how old, how old were you when you saw that? Uh, I was probably like 10 or something. Yeah. You know, I think when I was a kid, there's like one specific Halloween I remember. And, and, and here's a weird thing. As much as I love Halloween, I don't have one picture of me as a kid in a Halloween costume. Ah, oh, I've got a I few. Know what I, I don't even know what I went as, except one year I remember I went as a hobo. <laughs> yeah. and that was This was the Halloween I totally remember because there was one house that had all these either adults or teenagers that were dressed as like the Universal Monsters. And they had like fog floating from the doorway. They were wow. all just roaming around in it with colored lights. This is in the 70s? Yeah, that's totally. pretty advanced for the '70s. People didn't have fog and, uh, machines in the '70s. Yeah, I know it was weird. And then I remember I was scared, and the lady's like, "I'm like trick or treat." And she's like, "No, you got to go up to the door to get the candy." <laughs> that's that was you done. Would have to go, you'd have to go through the fog through the monsters. And so I was like, cool. Like well, I don't want to do that, but then I did it. And, and after it, I was done, it was like so fun and memorable that I was like it kind of inspired me to start doing that every year. And the next year I ended up doing a little spook house. In my oh, mom's wow. And it was inspired by two things that I did. The Brady bunch episode with all the ghosts floating down the stairs. Classic crap like that. And this show, I don't know if you ever seen this show, the hilarious house of Frankenstein. No. Was that, it's where'd you grow up? Canadian, it, well, I grew up in, uh, where I live right now, but this show was made in Canada. How did you for see some it? reason it was playing on TV in LA? And it's, yeah, huh. it, and it it um if you look it up on YouTube, the hilarious House of Frightenstein. It's super colorful, super fun. the The main actor Billy, I think it's Billy Bain. I don't remember his last name, but he plays all the characters. Vincent Price is on it. Hmm. Um, Damn, but it's kind of almost like a horror host show in a way, but, but I just remember the sets were like, Oh, I want to try and do my haunted house like that. And it didn't even like back then in the seventies, like we didn't even have like a dollar store where you could go buy dollar store graves. Right. <laughs> no. So I made, I made a graveyard in the garage by chopping up limbs off my mom's tree, throwing <laughs> dirt in the garage and taking <laughs> boogie boards and writing RIP <laughs> on them. <laughs> So, that's classic but it was so dark because i didn't have any lights in there except an <laughs> owl lantern so it it probably worked that's great and then i would i sat up in the rafters and i had like fishing wire where i had ghosts attached to it like the brady bunch mm -hmm. so i slide one down and then i had one mask a top stone mask a top stone top skull stone mask. and i used it in in the haunted house i just made a dummy out of it mm -hmm. but it's not this mask, but it kind of looked like this one. Hmm, okay. And I swear to God, when I huff this mask, oh my God, it totally smells like the 70s. Like, <laughs> it's weird too, because like if I huff this mask, it doesn't smell like nothing. But there's something on this mask that smells like the friggin' 70s Top Stone mask. Wow. Like, like it's like a powdery bubble gum or something. What a trip. Know. Check this out. Remember these costumes? Oh yeah, yeah. I've got. I actually have. That's great. I actually have a, a picture of me in in one of the in the spider or not the skull one, the skull yeah. the skull costume that I, I want to tell everyone too before we get too into it. 
If you're not watching this episode on YouTube, you really have to watch this on YouTube because Eric is showing oh, his, yeah, I'm his whole do a collection. Around this right now. <laughs> so you, I'm gonna start watch it on YouTube Jack if you're listening. Davis, yeah, that's Jack right. Davis six foot poster. Yeah. Which, by the way, here's my version of it. Oh yeah, that's right. It's so great. I love it. I love it. So there's a Jack Davis six foot poster. I found this recently at ah. the Halloween Funhouse for ten bucks. Wow, I remember that. I've seen that before. Uh, that's my version of the shock shock monster. monster yes, nice poster of Herman and uh, Grandpa. <laughs> That's great. I have some X and O paintings. Yeah, X and O. I have this great. signed Vampira poster I got Whoa. at Creature Features. Wow. They were when they were closing down. They had this in the back. I'm like, what are you gonna do with that? And they're like, oh, I'll probably throw it away. I'm like, can I have it? And really? Like, sure. Yeah. So I got that for free. Damn. I love those skeletons more. too, man. The skeletons are, are. Oh yeah, these guys. No, that's great too. But the one, the classic oh, ones, right yeah. next to it, those are just oh, yeah, so yeah. classic. Yeah, sixties, totally. seventies. I got some goofy Halloween stuff up here. I've got. I love the stuff that's still got like it in the package displays. Yeah, I have some of that. Like, mm-hmm. check this out. Say no to drugs. <laughs> that must have been <laughs> from the eighties, then, not the seventies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. They didn't say no to drugs in the seventies. <laughs> Got a couple Piz originals. These Excellent. two I commissioned Piz for. Here's wow. my little Fra- Frankenstein corner. Excellent. With all my Frankenstein stuff in oh, it. Oh man, I'm so jealous. Oh wait, I'm I have this model. Collection. I forgot. I was just telling Denise. I'm like, oh, I want to buy this one because I saw one on eBay made, mm-hmm. and I'm like, duh, I still yeah. have it. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. You don't know what you have because you have so much stuff. Couple Christmases ago. Oh, that's this great. Handmade. Got this Jack Davis. Oh, Grab that's it. awesome. I've never seen that one. Yeah, it was somebody on Instagram. I don't remember who made it. Got this. Do you remember these? Oh, well, speaking, I'm going to tell you a great Frankenstein story because. Are those lenticular? Yeah. Oh, that's that cool. Works. So. Yeah. When I was in, well, I'll finish this this half of the room in a second after okay. I tell this story. So, back when I was a kid, we went to Universal Studios for, uh, what the hell are those called when you get in the bus? Tour? <laughs> well, like the school goes there. Oh, field trip. A field trip. So, we went to Universal, and I think it was the 70s, because the first thing he saw was Alfred Hitchcock's body floating in the pond outside <laughs> wow. where you had to wait to go in. And they had so much Frankenstein stuff at Universal that year. They had, um, I think you got to see the Munsters or like a mock-up of the Munsters or Frankenstein set. Mm-hmm. And um, they had a, a thing where they would dress up people from the audience as Frankenstein in this machine. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And then they had like a coin operated thing. I think you put in a dollar. Put the, wa- the wax, yeah, little... wax Frankenstein. I had one of those, man. It was so cool. That smell. Then, <laughs> but this is the best. So we're, I mean, we were probably like 10. And Frankenstein's walking around the park, right? Yeah. So we go behind him and we're all like going like this. Oh, I'm Frankenstein. <laughs> so he follows us. We go in to get our lunch bags out of the locker room. He comes in the locker room. And he's like, "Hey, you little shits! I don't get paid enough fucking money to take your crap, so knock it off." Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, but he was still as Frankenstein, so it was like, oh, "Okay, we're sorry." Oh my god, that's so funny. I remember that Frankenstein that walked around looked pretty good too. Yeah. At least in my memory as a kid, it looked like didn't look like a terrible mask from what I remember. No. But but yeah, I wish I could go back in time and see that Universal Studios because yeah. there was like so much cool stuff there. Oh, uh, Universal Studios then. in the in the early mid seventies was so cool. That it was it was just those those wax machines, especially of the you know yeah. you get like King Kong and Frankenstein and. And that, that that was that weird injection molding machine, and you can watch it get made in front of you. So cool! Oh yeah. The weird thing is, I looked it up on eBay, and I'm like, "What do those look like now?" And I'm like, "Oh, he looks kind of like, like it didn't look as it didn't look as good as I remembered it." Yeah, no detail probably. But here I'll tell you another funny. So 
besides like I love collecting like Halloween records. Mm, yeah. These are just 45s I have. Like, oh man, I remember that. <laughs> Those came in like cereal boxes and stuff. Yeah, you had to cut it out. Yeah. I don't think this one plays though. Oh man. Remember this one? Somebody gifted me this last year from Instagram because I wrote, Well, I can't find this record. And he's like, Oh, I got one. I'll give it to you for your birthday. No way. What let me see. I can't really read it. Oh, it's from the back of the monster magazine. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Man. I got this this one's funny. It's a Halloween Christmas oh, song. That's great. Wow. Some of these I just put my own covers on because it was like Yeah, that's cool. Oh, and the same guy that gave me that other one gave me this one too. So cool. This oh one's man. Good. Can you it. see these? Yeah, that's yeah. Like, I love it. Okay. House. And these are just my 45. Oh, this one's actually probably one of my all-time favorites. This is from Winchell's Donuts. <laughs> wow. Winchell's Donuts, but it's like the creepiest story. <laughs> I don't. It's weird that Winchell's Donuts would put out a Halloween record. Yeah, right. I met him at my first horror convention I ever went to, Bobby Boris Pickett. You did, really? Yeah. Wow. CD's somewhere up in here somewhere. This is kind of my little... This is sort of my Halloween collection of stuff. <laughs> Let's see. Can you see it? Yep, I can see it. Like knickknacks. Here's mm -hmm. the original Frankenstein. Man, you put your your shit. It's your, CDs, your sh Halloween CDs. Your shelves put my shelves to shame. I have to say, I'm so, I'm, I I'm jealous. I almost was gonna dust, but then I'm like, I don't want to move all this stuff. No. Like reorganizing. Yeah. But like, this thing's cool. This party invite. Yeah, um, these things, pencil sharpeners. I love the look. The, the look of everything back then was so much cooler. Everything they, all the stuff they do. I, not all of it, because there are some pretty cool Halloween decorations they have now. But so much of it is so cartoony and like not yeah. not. It just doesn't have a sense of style. It's like almost trying to be too appealing to everybody or something. I don't know. Yeah, even the the music they did back then, like the yeah. Halloween. It's just so good. Like, yeah. Check out the Dixie cups. Ah, that. that's amazing. It's so cool. <laughs> Let's see what else. So much oh, in inspiration. Look at this old mask. Now, I don't know what this is. I put one of those weird eyeballs in it. Oh, that's cool. So funny. I just found <laughs> this this year. Oh, that's not. Wow, that's cool. What's this that from? Just... This? No, the, the Frankenstein? Yeah. Justin Mabry did that. That's cool. And I just bought this cassette this year. Mm. Man. <laughs> you need to open you, you, you could done. you could seriously open a museum. <laughs> seriously. See all these right here? These are all Halloween records. Wow. And oh I still got God. more. I got more everywhere. Like this one, this one's awesome. I don't know if you ever heard this one. House of Terror? No. No. It's like there's like about well, I'll send you a CD that's got that I did for this month, but uh, it's got like 30 minutes of, it sounds like you're in Dracula's Halloween party and he's torturing some lady. It's <laughs> while you're listening to like the monster mash of purple people eater and stuff. It's just <laughs> super weird. <laughs> Speaking let's, of super weird, <laughs> let's give the listeners, I'm going to put on 145 real quick. Okay. Let's see if you can hear it. I doubt it will get co copyright claimed because it's so weird and obscure. So. Yeah, plus it's old. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> Here, I'll show you some more of my stuff while it's playing. But this, this is the thing I put it in. Fools on a broomstick. Yeah. Is that too loud? Well, it's messing. I think it's messing your audio up. Is that better? Uh, to run up and down your spine. Isn't this guy weird? <laughs> Let me see. Well, no, the guy talks. Oh yeah, totally weird. What 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 year is this? Uh, I don't know. It's probably the sixties. Wow. Maybe the seventies. So cool. You know what? I think, I think though you, you, you should probably turn it off just cause it's, 
It's mess. Okay. Better? Yeah, it's because it's messing your audio up. It's like making yours okay. quiet. Have you ever heard of Burger Chef and Jeff? No, that's awesome. So Burger, though. Burger. Well, I put, put this art together from stuff they did. So okay. Burger Chef and Jeff. They also have like these weird floppy disks. Mm -hmm. This is like a hamburger chain back east, I guess. But mm -hmm. There's like five of these that have like the weird like little stories where they're like talking like this. And, oh, cool. Hey, like total monster stories that are fun. <laughs> this one's really good. It's called Fang Burgers Haunted Hotel. <laughs> So cool. He wants to open up a haunted hotel called the Thing Burgers Hotel. <laughs> Remember this guy? Screaming yep. Lord Such. Screaming Lord Such, yep. Here's another old Halloween record. 45. Damn. Oh, here comes some good ones. Some more from the back of the honeycombs box. Oh, cool. Oh my god. The problem with these is it's hard finding ones that still play. Yeah. Like, it's just that shitty cardboard yeah 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 haunted mansion of course Here, i'll tell you a cool haunted mansion story i don't okay. know if i told you this last time i don't Since know I can, did, wait, wait wait can you turn the music off because it's it's uh, not coming through at all it's just like it's just like yeah. bat, 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 and, it, and it just sounds like noise all right thank you so, it's a good try though i appreciate well, it. I'll get to it i'll get to a bigger record okay. so this was actually my first record i ever owned yeah, that's really that's chilling sounds of the haunted house. That's mine. That's my that, that was yeah. my that was my Halloween record. This is my funny story. Well, okay. two story. Okay. Okay. So that same year I saw the cool monsters at that house. Mm -hmm. After we left there, and I was trick-or-treating with my friend Tom Cole, whose dad actually worked at WED and he worked on this ride. Oh wow. So we got to one street and we're this was our year, like, we're going to get as much candy as we can. We're going to go to every house in the neighborhood and even the trailer park out front. <laughs> and so at one point, we split up and we're like running down the street, kind of. And I went to this house and it was super dark and creepy. And they had a long walkway that was kind of hidden by a wall. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, and they were playing this record in the garage. Oh, cool. It was, it was the Martian part that beep, yeah. <laughs> so I'm already kind of a little freaked out from going to that one house where the monsters were behind the wall and stuff. But I'm like, I don't want to go up to that door. There's probably something hiding behind there. Uh -huh. And there's like just a jack-o'-lantern in their window and the whole area was dark. So I just kind of like look around like somebody in here. Mm -hmm. Go knock on the door, knock on the door, knock on the door. And nobody came. Huh. I don't know what they just left the record playing. That's weird. But every year now we take uh, Leia, who's nine now, trick or treating over in that same neighborhood where my mom lives, mm -hmm. and we decorate her garage with all my stuff. And then we go trick or treating. But every time I walk by that house, I just stare at it and think, "That's that house that creeped me out." And there was nothing even in there that <laughs> that could have really creeped me out it was just i don't know i think stuff like that really messes with you more than like what you said when somebody tries to scare yeah, you. yeah yeah definitely it's more psychological you're just like oh but here's now here's the funny story of this record okay so the same kid tom cole comes to my house mm -hmm. i think we're gonna walk to school and i'm like hey wait a minute i just i got a record let me go get it i run out and i go look and it, the record flew out of the sleeve, <laughs> hit the ground, and broke into pieces. <laughs> and I only played it once. <laughs> and so it's so sad. And I, and I think I asked my mom, "Can I get another one?" And she was like, "No." <laughs> so, out of all my Halloween records, I think I have like ten of these <laughs> for a couple of reasons. I mean, this you'll find at the swap meet for a dollar. Oh, this really? Is like this one's probably the one you'll find the most because. It was big. It was, yeah, it was the most. It was the most popular. There, yeah, yeah. And they have this one too, the white version one. Oh yeah, that's right. Not really sure what the history it is on. That the looks white older, one. maybe. But to me, it looks. Well, I like... think they I think they put the orange one out twice. Hmm. I think they put it out first, and then they might have put the white one out second. Mm hmm. And then put the other one out again. I don't. I don't know. 
Hmm. But then there's this record, Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Oh, cool. This is one of my favorite things to watch on Halloween because that atmosphere again. Yeah. When once Ichabod goes through that little section with the headless horseman, it's just so beautifully put together. The mm-hmm. anime. Yeah. And the sound. It's just like so good. This is so, uh, this so is weird. an, an anima- animated uh, version that you watch? Yeah, the, the, the Disney one. Oh, the Disney the, one. Okay. The first one. Oh, okay. 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 I couldn't really where see it. Where it's got like the frogs going. Ichabod. Ichabod. Yeah. Ichabod. Ichabod. I haven't Ichabod. seen that one since I was a kid. I should probably watch it this year. Yeah. See? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah. That was great. That's so yeah. cool. Really animated. Really good, too. Yeah. And then there's the other Haunted Mansion record. Can you see this one? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep, I remember that one. This one had all the... So back to Tom Cole's dad who worked at WED. What, do you know what his name was? His dad's name? Yeah. Yeah, Arthur Cole. Arthur Cole. I wanted to, I wanted to interview him, but I guess he passed away. Oh. And while I was working at Disney, I actually ran into him once at the flower shop, but... When we were kids, he kept saying, I'm going to build the haunted mansion in the garage. <laughs> so every time I'd go over to his house, I'd go peek in the garage to see if he started. The only thing ever in there was a VW bug that looked like the Herbie the Love Bug <laughs> on like, fender blocks. <laughs> so I was like, when's he going to build the haunted mansion? I want... And then I'm like thinking, how's he going to build the haunted mansion in his garage anyways? His garage is so little. <laughs> but we used to do all sorts of fun stuff over there, like Cause we were all into like that stuff. Like we would do the thing where you would lift somebody, they would close their eyes and you'd put like your finger on them and mm-hmm. somehow light as a feather or yeah. whatever and we'd lift them in the air. We would do bloody, Mary. bloody Mary. Yep. <laughs> or, uh, one time we, um, we like tied fishing wire to the rocking chair in his bedroom and we made cassette tapes of noises and we invited all the cute girls over. We're like, you want to see it? a spooky house? And then they came over and we were like trying to scare him. They're like, this is so stupid. <laughs> That's, that was the extent of my haunted houses were like, I'd spend the night at a friend's house. We would take his bedroom over and rig everything up with, um, monofilament fishing line and then have like whoever whoever was in the house the parents or the brothers and sisters come check out our haunted house and you just basically (laughs) walk in a room and it's like this thing moves over here this thing moves over here there's a record playing in the background and it's like it's like (laughs) there's our performance you know (laughs) and imagine if we had the stuff that's available i know i know oh i know because like when i go to my mom's house now and I don't have stuff rigged up. I just set up dummies with, but they're so creepy looking. Yeah. Dummies are great. Actually, <clears throat> I actually heard one kid walking by from school when, when I was setting up and he's like, I don't like going to that house. That house. <laughs> creepy. How old was he? <laughs> he's probably like 10. <laughs> That's so funny. And it's not like I'm in there scaring him. It's yeah, just, just, just creepy. Play. I just want to put something there. So kids, get something kind of to remember like oh remember that house? yeah yeah not just like oh i went to this house and got a big giant candy bar yeah like, yeah the... i want them to like see stuff that might inspire them and it's funny now because there's like so many people that do home haunts that are just like I'm like how the hell do they do this stuff I like know. there's a kid who worked with me at, or his mom worked with me at disney he lives right around the street his whole front yard he builds everything in his yard he's got all these skeleton corpses that animate mm-hmm. he built like a fake burned out church that looks like kind wow of a haunted house that's so cool the first time me and leia went over there and she's like walking i'm like don't walk in the in in the stuff i don't know if this person will get mad and all of a sudden the garage door opens and i'm like uh-oh <laughs> he's like eric i'm like huh he's like do you remember me joey and i'm like Oh, oh shit. Yeah. You're Emily's kid. Wow. <laughs> this is your stuff. That's so cool. Yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, yeah. People still, you know, there's, you know what I noticed this year, like the last few years have been, I noticed around nine 11 Halloween really kind of going downhill. Like people weren't, tr- kids weren't trick or treating after nine 11. 
way yeah. back then. And it's kind of like gone up and down, but it never really regained its popularity, at least around where I live. And um, but in the last few years, I have noticed it getting getting back to acceptable levels. And, yeah. and a lot of people decorate now in, in pretty cool ways too. not the cheap, not the super cheap decorations but like now they have those giant skeletons that yeah those are great those are like skeleton skeletons to that big too like right right i I love that there's a there was i think they were selling at home depot like a big skeleton like i don't know 10 foot tall or something i think it's crazy but it's really sculpted well and i see a lot of a lot of those around and um you know people well it's fun just seeing effort into it i just love seeing how people choose to even their lighting Mm -hmm. how they do cobwebs it's just it's very like fun to i mean it sucks too because usually like last week leia and her mom got sick so they've been sick with the flu for a week so i didn't get to really go do anything except scare people on saturday last week Mm -hmm. because usually we're driving to burbank and looking at haunted houses and driving around out here where i live and looking at home haunts Mm -hmm. But um, and I haven't even got to decorate my mom's house yet because my mom's in Texas and she has her car in the garage, so I can't like yeah uh, put anything in there, which sucks. <laughs> I, I and and everything's going so fast that I'm just like kind of getting bummed out. Like, oh my god, Halloween's in a week. I know. Same here. It's like really disappointing. It's just and every year it keeps happening. It keeps going faster and faster, and I keep wanting to hold on to it and savor it more. Oh, I know. Yeah. But here's something I was going to say mm-hmm. about what you were saying about trick-or-treating going up and down. So, I mean, it's never going to be like it was when we were kids. No. Like my mom's neighborhood, there was hundreds of kids everywhere on the street. Yep. It was now amazing. on her street, you might see two other kids yep. on the same street. Yeah. But I did notice, and it was probably my maybe one of my most favorite Halloweens ever was when the pandemic hit Mm -hmm. that that year because i remember i went to my mom's i'm like i wonder if people are gonna even decorate or go trick-or-treating so i just brought stuff in case and my mom was like well i heard they told people to put tables out with the candy Mm -hmm. or put stuff down at the end of your driveways Mm -hmm. so i drove over to her house it's still daylight i'm like oh doesn't look like anybody's really doing anything so i'm like well i'm just gonna put my stuff out and then i'll just see we'll go trick-or-treating maybe to a few houses but by the time it was nighttime it was like insane everywhere really yeah so many people came out they were having like um those little fire pits it was kind of like a block party Hmm. around the whole entire neighborhood wow and people had super interesting ways to give the candy like people built those tube things like one guy he built a ghost and he would put the candy in the tube from the ghost's mouth and it would go down into the kids bags oh how cool or people would stick candy bags like on top of pitchforks stuck in their yards Mm -hmm. it was just very interesting how people took like that crappy situation and they were cooped up, I guess. Yeah, Sick made of being it good. Cooped up. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you ever have you ever gone to um, the Sierra Madre for Halloween? No. You don't know about Sierra Madre? Mm-mm. Oh my God! It's it's. I don't know if there's a bigger bigger setup in L.A. It's like you know Sierra Madre is kind of wealthy area, and yeah. um, it's about. Uh, let's see. From where I am, it's like you've got Arcadia west of me or to the right of me arcadia and then uh, pasadena and sierra madres around there uh-huh. and, and um but halloween so it's like all all the in this one block all the all these rich people they like totally do the house the houses up like crazy they have giant candy bars they give everyone some people have cider hot apple cider they you can go into their house but it's so decked out they have ghosts going across the street back and wow. forth and it's like packed like it's packed full of people which is you know not not great in one way but (laughs) yeah it's packed it's yeah it's but it's packed because it's so amazing it's like every house every house is like to the nines one house has like 
hundreds of jack-o'-lanterns all over the yard, like hundreds of them. It's it's insane. It's like these people really get into it. So if you ever get a chance, maybe this year, if you if you get a chance, they do it like the weekend before Halloween, I think, too. Yeah. So um, it's insane. The guy that worked with me at Disney, he used to, he lived on a street that was like that. And I, I remember I told him, how many kids do you usually, like how much candy do you have to buy to give out? He's like, oh, usually like, four to five thousand pieces i'm like oh my god i'm like i only buy like enough for maybe a hundred kids and i still have candy left over yeah i know i know it's he's it's, like yeah we're running out all the time it's crazy yeah yeah it's it's uh we don't get that many on our street it's sadly but you know it's like it's a generational thing too because you have to sort of wait for the kids to grow up to a certain age new kids yeah. are being born and, you know, there's a certain age where kids stop doing it. So you have yeah. to kind of like wait for that, that period. Well, my it. neighborhood, like my house, like down here is my garage. Mm -hmm. So I used to do it in my garage. But then, like you said, all the kids in the neighborhood kind of grew up and mm -hmm. then nobody was coming. So I'm like, I'm just going to go back over to my mom's and do it. Because mm -hmm. over there, I mean, I like doing it over there, too, because it reminds me of when I did it. Because right. it's in the same neighborhood but it's nothing like like a friend of mine this guy joey he used to work for wed too mm -hmm. but but not back then now right he actually was an animator he taught himself how to um build animatronics oh wow he built like a 30 foot tall jack skellington that like basically moves around and, and sings to the dialogue and then he built all the other characters in his yard damn and his house, well, his whole neighborhood's like insane. Like we went up there last year after my house and I'm like, man, there's nobody trick or treating. We go up there. There was like probably 500 people up there. Wow. Wow. So I think a lot of it too depends on your neighborhood. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you have like no people decorating. And like we, when we go trick or treating, I always tell Lay, don't go to that house. They don't have any lights on. Right. <laughs> Just go to the houses that have decorations. On. Yeah, yeah. That's what they people do that don't give out candy. They just turn the oh, lights off. Two years ago, we went trick-or-treating. And so we go down the street a few houses. And then we look across the street. There's this old man sitting in a wheelchair in the in the garage. He's like, come over here. I got candy. <laughs> and we're like, uh. so we go <laughs> over there. He's giving us little christmas candy canes <laughs> and i'm like he just go buy these now because now i mean you go to the dollar store now all the christmas shit's already out yeah <laughs> but then i was like are these candy canes from a year ago yeah. <laughs> more than a year ago <laughs> yeah i'm like yeah we we actually wasted our time walking over there for a little candy cane <laughs> that's but what i used to do when because like when we would set up in the garage and pass out candy, like, you know, you always get like teenagers. They won't even dress up. Yeah. They just come, no bag. They don't even say trick or treat. Yeah. <laughs> most of the time. So I'm like, I'm, I'm going to start buying dog biscuits at the dollar store. I'm going to give bad kids dog biscuits. I only had to give one or two away, but how I would do it is I hide it in the candy bowl and if they came up and didn't say nothing and they're just standing there, you just get not even dressed up, but they had a bag. So I just like reach in and I grab it so you can't see. And I stick it into his bag and drop it so he doesn't <laughs> know what I put in there. But I'm like, I wonder what that guy thought when he got home and he's like, throws out all his candy. He's like, dog biscuit. <laughs> you can always so say, I started, hey, I was giving it for your dog. I was giving it for you to give your dog. <laughs> but I started asking fans like what's the weirdest thing you've given to people that are bad and some people are like oh i i actually will like put cellophane around a rock <laughs> as long as they didn't say razor blades in an apple <laughs> yeah no or or and you'd always get like weird stuff every now and then too like the, the pennies bible, those bible pamphlets yeah or uh, the jack oh, chick pamphlets those are great well here's Here's the thing about pennies. I know everybody hates getting pennies, but there was a house that was right next to Tom Cole's house with two old people. Mm -hmm. They would sit outside with a TV tray with stacks of five pennies. 
then there would be a couple silver dollars. And I think the way they did it, it was depending on your costume. If they thought your costume was like exceptional, they gave you the silver dollar. That's different. That's the good. 70. That's a different story. So, I was even like five pennies. I'm going up to the Seven Eleven and buy some candy. Could yeah, you, you can buy <laughs> you can buy for candy for five. Yeah, <laughs> and the Seven Eleven that year actually was giving away free mini Slurpees. Oh wow! So we went all the way up to the Seven Eleven, went in there, and they said, "Oh, have some free mini Slurpees." And we're like, "Whoa, that's cool!" <laughs> remember the more. I remember those wax those wax oh. monsters too, where you bite the head off, drink the juice out of it. Oh yeah. Well, you know what? Those funny things were great. Okay, here's that bag. I set up all this stuff because I was like, Here, I'll just go around my room and talk about stuff. <laughs> so, speaking of those, like, I, I know these aren't the same, but I swear to God, I remember. Oh, yeah. Things you'd either eat them or didn't some of them have that fluid in them you could drink? I don't remember if they did. I, I just remember that you'd chew them. It was like chewing wax. Yeah. Like, you know how most of my characters I draw always have, like, like here, I'll show you this. Well, here, I'll show you a few shirts I'm going to be doing. Okay. So this Alfred E. Newman one. Oh, that's great. I'm bringing it back starting Halloween. That's cool. Same with the hat box guys. Ah, oh, that's so cool. And this Ghastly one shirt. That's a great one. I had and that one. I think it died. This one. Uh, that's great. This one I drew for an event me and Norman just did at my friend's record store. So, well, here, I'll show you and tell you a little bit about this so like i think it was like three weeks ago yeah um, we did this ghastly ones toxic tunes thing at the record store so oh cool I was at the dollar store out here on saturday they always have hot rods park in the parking lot at the dollar so, store yeah weird it's a big parking lot okay so sketch this out that's awesome just for fun yeah and then turned it into a pen and ink. That's great. And then turned it into this. And I'm I was gonna try and do shirts, but it was like kind of too late to do shirts. Mm -hmm. So I, so I just did some posters and brought posters. And then when we had everybody sign it in the band, and then I was selling some of those like just big white ones. Oh, cool. So they like, they they the the band didn't play though, did they? No, but I think they're either gonna. Maybe get back together to maybe play next year. Oh man, they really should get back or together, man. Do a new record, maybe. I they really they should. I know they're so good, so great. But here's another thing about the Seven Eleven. Do you remember these guys, parachute people? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Poopa Troopers, so, aren't they called Poopa Troopers? Yeah. So out of all this stuff, now if your people are watching on YouTube, they're really gonna enjoy this view of stuff okay so see all the stuff way back there that's all my mad paperbacks oh nice i have some of those <laughs> here's, here's that thing again excellent here's the thing i'll tell you about this too because i'm doing a thing with butch patrick right now wow he signed it for me oh that's cool so here's this is the oldest thing in my art room what is it it's pooper trooper oh yeah that's right that is so you buy cool. These and they throw them in there and they fly down with the. Yeah, they have, they have little plastic parachutes. Yeah, those were those were the, the rubber guys. Yeah, I, I I have some of those still. I was I went on a tear on eBay a few years back and I started. I remembered those and I was like, oh, I, I was buying all kinds of them. Oh yeah, every Halloween, usually like September, I I do really good. This year I didn't do as good as I usually do, but I always start looking on eBay for just weird shit to buy mm -hmm. yeah there's so but many a lot of this stuff is like stuff i either got there that's... here's remember creature features yeah that's so here's cool the, that drawing i drew that this guy turned into a sculpture that's great can you, can you see this stuff or is it too dark no it looks great it looks great it's really it looks really good here's another level oh here's a really cool thing i doubt you can see this but i'll put it up here anyways Wait, where's it the... oh is that a uh can you see something if I do this? No, nah, I'm just seeing your chest. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> you got to find the camera. I don't know where the camera lens. It's the top of the. Yeah, they're uh, almost. Uh, there you go. Almost. Oh, to the, the little to the. Oh, uh, you got to move it to. There you go. Perfect. Uh, uh, a little back, a little more. Back a little more. Oh, uh, uh, so close. Oh, yeah. It's the <laughs> it's the Disneyland or it's the Disney cartoon with the ghosts. 
but I've had that since I was a kid. Too. Oh, that's so cool. That's and so it, it's cool. It's one of those things where you could like rotate this. Yeah, you spin it, it plays a little loop. Cartridge. Yeah. So you could do it for forwards, backwards, slow. You know, there's a guy, uh, real quick, there's a guy named uh, Van Neistat who is, uh, 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 makes these videos on YouTube. And he he took old home movies, Super 8 home yeah. movies, and he would buy those those cartridge thingies and and uh, on eBay and the, and the little cameras, and he would take them apart and then p splice his own home movie loops. And wow. then they would give them to people as gifts. Isn't that cool? cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really awesome. I'll send you a link. I'll send you the video if I can oh, find it. Here's my monsters, my monsters, some of my monster stuff. Cool. And Adam family. I got a bunch of Charles Adams books. The yeah. groovy goos. Here's uh, an animation cell. Excellent. Um, excellent. Birthday. So, like what I was saying, so Butch Patrick, Eddie Monster. Yes. He um, contacted me because I, I met him when I was working at Disney. Mm -hmm. I actually was on his horror host show once. Your wife was that? He had a horror host show with this girl, mm. Ivana Cadaver. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was on there as a guest. Yeah. Oh. So was it like a local guessing, TV thing or something? Yeah. Okay. It was like probably 2002. Okay. So he, he asked me, hey, can you do a picture? I'm going to be doing this event. He's at a, a haunted house in Arkansas right now called Creepy Works. And he has a whole entire building where he has like the Dragula and a bunch of his Munsters collection. He's got stuff. a Munster collection? Munsters collection? Yeah. Which Patrick does? I think, well, he has like the Wolf Wolf and, and stuff that yeah. he's had. And then I think they put a bunch of Universal Monsters stuff in there, too, because he was going to kind of show you, like, how that stuff evolved into the Monsters. That's cool. So he asked me, hey, can you draw a picture maybe of me with a bunch of Universal Halloween-type characters? Mm -hmm. And at first, I was kind of like, oh, I don't, I don't really like drawing people because I don't feel like comfortable drawing people. <laughs> So I kind of was like, what about that guy that drew this for you? That looks cool. And he's like, well, no, I wanted your stuff because it, it's more edgy. Uh, and I was like, oh, oh, all right. And then so he just kind of was like, well, yeah, if you if you don't want to do it, then and he just kind of hung up and said goodbye. So I, I was like, oh, man, I really should. Maybe I'll just try and draw something. And if I like it, I'll send it to him and see if he wants to use it. So I drew this. Oh, that's great, man. That's great. So there's, it totally there's totally looks like him. That's great. Yeah. And it's in your style like, too. Yeah. So I did put like Spot's tail with like a dog dish that says Spot. That's great. And, and a I'm, girl that's kind of Lily Monsterish. Mm -hmm. Frankenstein, Invisible Man, the Mummy, a Witch. Love it. Love it. So this, he signed a bunch of them for like, there's his signature mm -hmm. in mine. So I've been doing these giveaways on, through the month like... Basically, right now, if you buy these three new shirts I'm doing, which is a Lily Munster shirt, mm -hmm. a Frankenstein shirt head, and a, the Lux Interior Cramps Frankenstein head, mm -hmm. you get entered for a chance to win this. Cool. But here's an even better prize. So I'm trying to get people, like, here's the thing that bugs me. So many people have bought shirts from me, right? Mm -hmm. But I never see people wearing them. Well, you know, so, I wear every time I go out, I'm wearing most of my shirts are your shirts. <laughs> well, I see your pictures, but all these people that I know, I'm like, man, do they ever wear them? <laughs> so I thought, what if I do a contest? I'll have people wear their favorite Toxic Tune shirt, a monster mask of their choice or some kind of makeup and stand with their collection. Whenever I do live feeds, everybody be like, "Hey, show your collection." Mm -hmm. Start showing it. So I wanted to see what pe other people collected. So I've gotten some people to do it. I, I kind of wish I get more, but I've got an even bigger one signed by both of us. And oh, then cool! I have a book that Butch put out. And nice. He signed this too. So whoever wins, it's going to be a raffle. I'm going to pick the winner on November first. Oh, excellent! We'll get like this print in this book. Cool. So just taking a picture. Yeah, that's great. And that's on your Instagram. Yeah. Very cool. Here's like 
I only got a few left of these two, the trick or treat bag specials for oh, this year. Oh, that's great. Yeah. These are so great. I get this bag comes with this little pinball game. So cool. Comes with that same print, but not signed by Butch Patrick. Some CD and buttons. And yeah, your you. your Halloween bag. His Eric's Halloween bags bags are amazing. They're so full of cool stuff. They're Thanks. jam packed. Definitely yeah, worth the I money. Tried to, tried to make it fun, so it's like when you open it, it's like like kind of brings you back. To yeah, you could tell they're. They were created with love. Like you're, you're into yeah. what you're doing. It's not just some rip off thing. It's like you're into no, it. No. I've been doing them. This this bag is actually the seventeenth year of doing wow. it. Wow. So like, and and you know how I started doing that was one year I was grocery shopping, and back then I didn't even do Halloween merch. I don't think. Really? Yeah. It's it's really weird. I don't weird. even know if I drew Frankenstein that much back then. And wow. so we were just going through the grocery store and I saw the candy display at the end cap and mm -hmm. it had like a box with some cool Halloween art on it. So I just remember I went to my car and sketched something out and then I'm like, maybe I should try and do something with this. Like maybe I could do like a, a trick or treat bag and put some stuff in it. And that's kind of how it started just from going grocery shopping. That wow. Way. Yeah. I remember your, I remember seeing your stuff in the, I think it was the early two thousands. Is that, is that yeah. possible? And uh, seeing like stickers up like outside of, I think it was outside of Wacko maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, well, they Wacko's had my postcard set. Okay. Okay. I remember seeing, and it, and it was, uh, yeah, it wasn't, uh, I don't know that it was Halloween stuff, but it was your style of uh, monsters. Uh, oh, wait, it could have been, which Wacko's was it? Was it the one on, on Highland? Oh, wait, not Highland. Melrose, or was it the one that's kind of across from that strip joint? <laughs> uh, I don't, I mean, they, it's the one with one the gallery in the back, Lelou's Jesus. It's the, like that, yeah. it's on the east end of Melrose, I think, right? Because at one point they had Lelou's the Jesus gallery above the soap plant, and then they had right. to go all separate buildings, and then right. they kind of moved off the main Melrose strip into another building where they put everything into one building. So yeah. they, they probably did have my stickers then. Yeah. Yeah. But here's something else. I'll show you that. So this is part of the trick or treat bag too. this, this world's worst monster jokes. <laughs> is that so, your, yours? Did you make that? Well, here, I'm going to show you. Okay. So my friend Rody, he does kind of cute Halloween stuff too. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's on Instagram. I've been doing a bunch of his draw this in your style challenges for the whole month. Mm -hmm. He did this last year. He posted this joke book mm -hmm. from the old days. That's sure great. Got to be from the 70s. Yeah, it looks like the 70s. Anyways, I drew this picture of it, and then I'm like, hey, maybe I should do a joke book next year. So I just took like a bunch of my black and white art and just found some monster jokes off the internet That's that I so like. Cool. Just kind of stuck it in there. That's great, man. So... I mean, people could buy this too separately, or you could get it with the trick or treat bag, but pretty that, fun. It's got a bunch of like really corny monster jokes. That's so it. cool. I love it. Where did you Plus get you the get monster art? That yeah. I yeah. It's great just for the art too. Where did you get it printed? Uh, color images. Color. I just do like small batches. Color They're images. Kind of over by Disney Studios. Oh, okay. They're just a little place that does that. Yeah. That's where I've kind of been doing my prints for a lot of my stuff since I started kind of doing prints. You're not printing them yourself? N no. Yeah. yeah I, just, I guess if you're, if you're... Of, most of my prints don't. Really, oh, this is another thing you get in the trick or treat bag too. This poster. That's cool. So, yeah. I'll show you. I'm going to show you something I've been doing. Oh, wait. Did I show you that already? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't, I think don't so. remember. I'm so old. I think you should. I think you showed me before we started recording, maybe. Yeah, oh, you, yeah. That was you showed me before. Oh, yeah. So I've been doing these animated things, basically just to have fun. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to do a, like an animated Halloween special. You have to, stuff. man. You have to. You have to have your stuff animated guys, at some point. These guys always, that show always inspired me. I'm like, oh man, I should have something with my creepy characters. So yeah, this one is, this guy's named Icky because that's what Leia calls me. She's uh -huh. called me that since she was like a baby. Really? A <laughs> Icky? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> my name is Icky. Hey, you guys, would you like some 
Wait, go Someone. down. The, I get, go make the camera go down. There we go. That's better. That's better. Hey, guys, want some of my caramel skulls I made for the party? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I love it, but I really want some m and I've been looking for m and ms all Halloween, and nobody has any. And this guy's <laughs> like, give it a rest, Frankie. And then Frankenstein's got the girl tied to his back. Oh, man. <laughs> so cool. If you know... Here's like, okay, go ahead. I think that's Charlie Brown putting poison in the. In the oh apple. my God, that's so cool. And then here's, so, and this is just one of the little stories. I've been doing them going through graveyards and like, here's the kids from Charlie Brown, but they look more <laughs> toxic tunes. That's great. Except, yeah. Except for Lucy, because she's just a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's normal. That's hilarious. You know, you haven't had a, a an animator reach out to you and, and, no, you because it's like, there. oh, that's awesome. Is that an what is is that an original uh... original Groovy Ghoulies pencil? Wow, from the show. So here's a funny story. Wait a minute. No. Wait, 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 wait. Before you start, before you start, okay. you your stuff is so suited to do like a an, an animated short or an animated series. It just seems crazy that it hasn't been done yet. It's crazy to me. It seems like it. There's got to be someone out there who would would animate well, your, your work. It just seems like it, it wouldn't even be that hard to do because your stuff no, is no. so suited to it. Well, it's funny because like back at at the end of Disney's, I actually was pitching a Halloween special and stuff. Uh, and everywhere I went, they were just kind of like they didn't get it. And they were like, I think they just wanted to see what's popular. Like we want superheroes or. Yeah, right. But yeah, like this stuff, I mean, it's funny because when I do these, people are like, oh, those animation things you do are funny, but they're not really animation because here's how I do it. Yeah, you're just basically I just <laughs> click on the character and Photoshop <laughs> with the mouse. And seriously, I'm doing like three voices at a time. So I'll be like, and what are you doing? A screen recording or something or recording it with it on my phone? Oh, I really? do it on my phone. I do it on my phone and then I edit it on my phone and then I add sound effects on top of it. So oh it's, my God. it's almost like I'm doing like little story vignettes yeah. without the animation. I mean, they're moving, but they're not like talking where their mouths are moving and it's different drawings. It's just like, man, oh, it, any, right. anybody. Who's... Hey, Chad, how's it going? You like, you like my team? Oh my God. Yeah. I'll here's, t- here's Boo. <laughs> Boo's a little ghost, but he's wearing a Frankenstein mask. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. If I was if I was rich, I would I would produce I would I, I would fund a an Eric Piggers Toxic Tunes uh, animated series, hundred percent. Well, I've always like you know how the lotto goes insane out here sometimes, where mm-hmm. it's like, did it go to a billion? Yeah, once? And I'm recently. Like, if I win that- I win that billion dollars. I'm going to make a Halloween special. You could do it. You could kickstart it. You would just need to have like a, you need to have like set up a team, have a team set up already that, that could animate it because, because you could, you could, you could probably raise, you could probably go to an animation company and say, look, what would it cost to do an animated series or a short proof of concept and then kickstart it with your fan base? You could raise the money to do it. I'm sure. I don't know. It's hard enough even selling ten shirts these days. Yeah, but people seeing no, the the idea that they would see an animated movie is is a different story. Yeah. I think I don't know. Seems... Well, it's funny because I wanted to do it like with Uncle Piggers as the horror host. Oh yeah, special. Like I had a whole show set up that would be so fun if it ever would have got greenlit. Mm-hmm. But that was when I was young and and spry. Yeah. And now I'm like. The other day I was doing a Instagram story and I'm like, oh my God, I don't have the energy anymore to, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do that. I know. Especially after a heart attack 10 years ago. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> it's like, I'm 61 now. I'm old. <laughs> but I'll show you. What was your groovy? Go- you okay. What, what was your groovy ghouly story though? I interrupted oh, you because I, I had to so, tell you that you need to animate okay. your stuff. So this and this is actually, there's four drawings in here. I got it for 15 bucks. Some guy's selling groovy ghouly drawings on eBay for 15 bucks. From the but original the, guy? The guy, the animator? Yeah. Wow. Well, 
So this one, it wasn't finished. It was in blue on his face mm -hmm. because, like, you know how it was limited animation. So they would have, like, separate levels for stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, that I'm just going to buy it and clean it up myself. And that's what I did at Disney. Oh, so that's I bought cool. it and I just finished it. So it's a finished drawing. That's great. <laughs> that's let's awesome. See, let's see what else was in here. Yeah, I know the draft one's the best. But I think there was a couple. And then I kept looking at all his other ones. I'm like, oh, I should buy more. But then I didn't really see any ones that like really grab me. Mm -hmm. This one was a miscellaneous character, but it's, it was already finished. See here, I didn't do this one. See how it's in blue on his face? Yeah, wow. That's that's the part that's going to be animated. Well, that's the yeah. That was the part that would be on a separate level because mm -hmm. it was limited animation. The non-photo blue pencil. She wasn't finished either. I think her. I don't remember if her jaw wasn't finished. Maybe. Hmm. So that's great. But yeah, the back one. That's an awesome drawing too. It is. I mean, that's worth way more than fifteen bucks by itself. Yeah, that's crazy. But I don't know if people. I don't know. It's it's. Here's how I feel about stuff like that. Personally, I rather buy an artist original concept drawing than even paintings and stuff just because that's kind of where the idea sprouted from mm -hmm. yeah but that's just i know some collectors like that yeah but here let's get into some of the other stuff that i put out that's cool. kind of inspired uncle piggers to become let's talk about my art for a while yes so you know i'm a huge this fan is of your probably art. my biggest inspiration not Howie. Do you know Howie Pyro? No. But I know that like, comic. I I I have. I, I I remember that. I have. I remember that from a book I had. A mad, a big thick Mad Magazine book oh, yeah. that went way back to to early days. That's where I knew yeah, about. This it. is when it was EC Comics. Mm -hmm. Like, when, but this is the very first Mad that ever came out. Right. I mean, it, this isn't an original. This is one that came in the Super Specials. Okay. Because. If I were to buy that one, the original one, it would probably be thousands of dollars. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be on this your floor. <laughs> I don't know. So back when the hilarious House of Frightenstein was inspiring me, so was this comic book. I don't you know, remember right that one. Plop. Wow. <laughs> so this was drawn by a lot of the mad people. So oh, he had cool. like Sergio Aragones did all the, he had like, they were kind of the horror hosts of the comic. Mm -hmm. He'd have a, People like Basil Wolverton or Wally Wood doing some of the covers. Excellent. And then there's these Monster Howls oh, or man. even the old Monster Cracked magazines. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff. Here's a fun DVD. Woody Woodpecker's Halloween special. <laughs> wow, that's so, obscure. My love for Woody Woodpecker goes back to the local drive-in that was right down the street from my mom's house. Mm -hmm. Like you could walk to it. Woody they Woodpecker showed... was huge in the early yeah, 70s, man. I was show Woody I was much. I was a fan back then too. That was like a big deal. I forgot until you just brought it up. That was just like or part of everyday see life. Shakey's, remember? <laughs> Shakey's. Shakey's pizza. <laughs> yep. You go Shakey's pizza and see Chili Willy. <laughs> But here's a here's a real cool hardback <laughs> mad. It's, wow. It's a lot of the old easy stuff. This is I think this is from France. Yeah. But here's like all my my mad collection of stuff. Harvey Kurtzman. Yeah. Here's some more monsters, old books, Damn. apes, kiss, which was my first concert. Oh wow. Yeah, they were my favorite band back then. UFO, you know UFO? Well, here I'll tell you a funny story. No one this. knows UFO. I'm like the only person I know who knows UFO. They were such a great this, band. I saw UFO with Michael Schenker, 1977. Wow. They opened for Rush at the Santa Monica. Ah, Center. what an amazing show! And I think they, I think they, he quit the band after that. Really? He but was always this, quitting the band. This this tour, the No Place for Run this. Remember these Pop Tart 8 tracks? Yep. <laughs> Sound like so, shit. <laughs> okay. I went to go see this at the Long Beach Arena this tour. Mm -hmm. They Iron Maiden open for them. I think it was Iron Maiden's first record. Wow. And I had a piece of shit car. So when we were driving 
back from the Long Beach Arena all the way to Santa Clarita. I'm like, oh, I better stop at a gas station and get some oil. So we pulled off this old road somewhere, and there was a gas station, and it, I think it was open or just closing, but I swear to God, it looked like this picture. And I was like freaking out. Like, oh, wow. This, this <laughs> gas station looks like the record cover of the tour. I just saw. What's that? What's the live, their live album that was really big? Strangers yeah. in the Night? That's like one of my favorite live albums. That is a, one of the best live albums ever recorded. It's so other good. The second best one is these guys. Then Lizzie Live and Dangerous. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I've never yeah, heard that one. Live. Oh, my God. It's so good. Here's a cool kiss patch. Cool. Got it from my friend's record store. <laughs> So that was my first concert, 1976. Amazing. Here's, a, here's the Destroyer tour. Here's a tie dye shirt I bought at SWAT. Oh, cool. <laughs> check out this. Check out this shirt. This thing's insane. This Jack Davis drawing. Can you oh see man, it? yeah. It looks so good how it's done this way too. It's incredible. Wow. So that was the poster for a Mad Monster Party. Oh, cool. Yeah. I think Frazetta's got used, but this is the one Jack Davis did. So so amazing. He designed all the characters in this. And Harvey Kurtzman actually wrote a lot of the wow. story. Which, which is weird because the this, this show's kind of boring. Right. Which I'm like, how how could they go wrong with the story with Harvey Kurtzman and yeah, Jack Davis just didn't art? translate. But I mean it's it makes up for it in how cool everything looks and the and the vibe oh, of the whole thing. It's so great. I mean, it's just kind of slow. It is. Yeah, it's weird. It's a little, maybe it's just too long. Maybe it needs to Three, be. Needs to be I'm, hold on a second. Look at this. Maybe it needs to be re edited. Yeah, that's great. I love that mask. Here's my mask I sell. That's great. I love it. <laughs> still get these masks. I got three of them available. Look, he's got low voltage. So cool. <laughs> so this was the first mask Justin Mabry made for me. And then it ended up being the first mass uh, trick or treat studios put out. That's so, it's great. I love it. I love it. Do you remember these? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. I had so many of those. I don't know what happened I to put, them. I put one of these in everybody's trick or treat bag. How do you get them now? Are they, can you get them cheap? Uh, they're on eBay. Well, for a while, there was guys selling packs of these for like, I think 25 bucks for like, I think you got 45 or 70 of them, but now they're getting a little, cause these are just repressed ones. Right. I think they're, yeah. Yeah. They're not, but, it's, but that's you know, what we look at, look at the art on there. I think I that's know. Too. Yeah. It looks like it. I remember like, that's what we used to get for it's instead of baseball, life. instead of baseball cards, we didn't collect baseball cards. We collected monster cards or at least I did. Yeah. Well, here's the ones I got mostly. Let's see if I can get it out of here. So I met this guy. Actually, gave got help get him a job at Disney Studios. Really? It was weird because he was like one of my biggest early inspirations. Is this guy, BK Taylor? Hmm. He did. Uh, remember these? Yeah. And you get them for like a nickel. You get like I think three cards in bubble gum or four cards. Yeah, those are great. <clears throat> But yeah, he told me, it's like, I don't know how I got this gig. I think because he said he submitted artwork to Big Daddy Roth. Mm -hmm. And Big Daddy Roth was like, I, he thinks Big Daddy Roth might have told this company about him because he wasn't going to be able to use them for some reason. Oh, wow. But this guy sold so many of these bubblegum cards. He said the first time he ever got a royalty check, and this was in the 70s. Mm -hmm. I think he said it was like a hundred grand. Oh my God. That's like a million dollars now. <laughs> I know. Cause it, it just, and then he did a joke book with BK or with a uh, RL Stein that huh. was went real viral too and sold a shitload. Damn. I don't think he made much off that, but still it was cool meeting like, wow. It's weird when you meet artists that, were artists that inspired you as a kid and, and they're like and they're broke ass broke asses <laughs> like us it's like it's just like you, you and me you know people yeah. meet us and think we're like the shit or something rich. yeah rich and we're all like old and broken yeah. down we're, trying, we're just like trying to keep the wheels on yeah i mean well it's weird too because part of me 
Like, I always get, like, frustrated where I'm like, man, I wish I could start making more money at doing this. Because a lot of times lately, I just feel like giving up. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired of struggling all the time. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I wouldn't give it up because I can't give it up because it's my passion in life and it's what I'm, I love doing. So the selling purpose. part, I don't really enjoy. Yeah, we just Especially do it because we get, have to. We just do that yeah, part because we have to. You get kind of attached to stuff you're doing, and it, and if it doesn't do well, you just start thinking like, "Oh, did that drawing suck? Right? Why didn't that suck? like?" But nowadays, everything's so hard to sell because nobody has money, anyways. But yeah, it's still it just I don't know. I I don't know if you feel this way, but it really messes with your. I don't know if it messes with your soul, but it just kind of put you in a funk. Oh yeah. Like you start getting depressed. Like, yep. and I don't think people think of that. Like artists getting like that, like, Oh, look at this guy. He gets to sit at home all day and do what he loves. And he's bitching and complaining. And I'm like, well, yeah. Not and complaining. I just people, wish it wasn't so hard. People. Yeah. That's the thing that I always, I I've made this observation many times on the show is that it's, it's so hard to do. Like, it's so much work. It's too hard. It's like yeah. it's doing your own business should be difficult. It should be hard. And I understand that. And it should be hard work. But it's it's beyond. It's just, it's like, it's it's in another realm of hardness. It's so difficult yeah. to where we, it's like you have to just constantly hustle this shit. And it's it makes it like, yeah. it kind of almost takes the fun out of it. It does. It's, like, it's so much hard work that you almost don't want to do, but you just can't do anything else. <laughs> so it's like, you just have to suck it up and do it, you know, and just well, hope that you, because... some, something goes viral or something, you know? Yeah. And it's not like, it's just like, it's every month. I know. It's not like, like you start at the next month, like, okay, I got no money again. Hope I sell stuff this month so I can get by each month. <laughs> I've told, I've, so, I've said is, this all the time. I say this all the time on the podcast, man. People are well aware. It's like every month it's like a grind. And then every <laughs> once in a while, maybe every, I don't know, five or seven, 10 years, you'll get some like a windfall or some good deal. And you're actually yeah. be making decent money for a couple months. And you, and you think like, I did it. I made it. <laughs> and you think it's going to stay like that. And then it does it. <laughs> it goes back no. to normal. And then you start and buying shit on eBay and you're like, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Or it's like for me, I remember last time I had a, a kind of a windfall. I was like, oh, I can finally fix my house. I've got like leak, the <laughs> roof is leaking in the back and all this stuff. So I started hiring someone to do all this stuff. And then, you know, a few months later, it's like back to the back to the grind. Oh, you don't have any money again. I got to pay. Oh, more, yeah. Whatever. Check it's this like, out. It's insane. So like we were supposed to paint our chimney now for six months. I'm surprised they haven't tried to take us to court because I live in a community that enforces that crap uh-huh. but the last rain caused this yeah <laughs> and then so i called their insurance company and they were like uh okay well your deductible is a thousand dollars so and then somebody came and looked and he said oh it probably cost 1400 bucks i'm like i only got a thousand bucks to like I know. fix that i know and, I, and then I thought, okay, well, September's coming. Maybe I'll do it then because then I'll get some money. And then it was like slower. So I was like, ah. I know, I know, man. That's, like, I got this little, here's my other little Halloween area. Awesome. So check this mask out. This thing's badass. That is badass. No, so, last year, it's like I'm not a huge mummy person or creature from the Black Lagoon, even mm. though that was the only monster model kid i ever had as a kid was uh the creature oh really yeah you didn't have all of them nope here's another funny thing too i didn't own one famous monsters magazine only how i I was (laughs) i don't know i was only into like mad and plop and and crack wow and halloween so i think that's why when you look at my artwork it looks like it does because it's got like kind of a feel of all that stuff yeah and it has the humor and weirdness of it but um yeah last year so i was looking up masks and i saw this one 
And I'm like, oh man, I really want that. But it's like 85 bucks. Yeah, that's a nice one. eBay. And so it's like shit. And then one guy bought one of my trick or treat bags. He's like, oh, I bought that bag so he could buy that mask. I'm like, oh, cool. How oh, cool. So I bought this mask. And then this one was 10 bucks. <laughs> so, and it looked better in the picture, of course. Kind of like, <laughs> so when it came, I'm like, what? Oh, I was going to wear this glass this last Saturday to, to scare people in. I swear, I'm lucky I don't have pink eye. Because my fr- friggin' eyes were itching so bad. I'm like, oh, my God, is it that mask? <laughs> Like I had to sit there and water my eyes for like an hour just to get them to open up. And I'm like, I'm not wearing that mask. <laughs> Fiberglass particles or something. Who knows Probably. what's in there? Got this creepy witch from, oh, oh check this witch out. That's cool. So there's a store called the Halloween Fun House. It's out in uh, what's the name of the, kind of Van Nuys area. Huh. Never heard of and, it. Um, it. Well, it's this guy. He just finds stuff and he brings it and sells it. Like I got this there for like five bucks. Nice. Got that for five bucks. Wow. I got it for five bucks. These are all like used vintage things. Yeah. That's it's cool. Just, just finds, but it's either broken. Like I got this weird little black cat. Mm-hmm. Check out this witch. I'll turn her on because I lo- I love witches. Mm-hmm. Where's, where's the thing? Oh, here it is. Ah, that's cool. Love that. So great. So, yeah. It's funny, too, because the guy's like, tells Leia. Leia's the little nine-year-old girl. Mm-hmm. She goes, I noticed your dad just likes Frankenstein and witches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yep. But here's some cool stuff Norman gave me. So when Norman came and did that ghastly ones thing, uh, he brought Norm- all these vintage die cuts. He's like, oh, if you want any of these, just take them. Wow. So I got I got this one, this. Oh, that's killer. Uh, these up here. Those are great. Wow. Oh, my God. So cool. This one. Damn. I found this at the swap meet, this light up witch. Ah, that's a score. He gave me this one. What else did he give me? He gave me a big, oh, he gave me this skull one. This is my kitchen table, by the way. This is this is where I put all my orders. Oh, uh, hey, me- my, my dining room is is my shipping department and molding and <laughs> casting department as well. But these on game. Oh, those are great. Posters of Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror. Excellent. Um, oh, wait. I got no witch. Maybe I should wear that one. <laughs> like, I got so much cr- crap in here. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I should bring that up too. Man. Check these out. So Justin Mabry made these... Frankenstein pills. Damn. Are those molded plastic? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> kind of. I think he was going for it. I'll show you. Those are great. Yeah, these just came out like from Trick or Treat Studios. I just put this thing on, on this one. I would love to be able to do molded plastic stuff. So this one's, it looks like an old one, but it's not. This guy recast it and painted it. I'm like, can you paint it orange so it looks like those old ones? Because mm-hmm. if you could find one of these, they're like 500 bucks. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So, got my Halloween display outside, sort of. <laughs> cool. Oops, this cool Frankenstein. I think that's supposed to be the guy from the Groovy Ghoulies. <laughs> looks like it is wow but yeah I find a lot of oh check this haunted house out that guy he also at the halloween fun house gets stuff that's either handmade or he gets like oh that's cool prototypes but check this out wow that's great very cool that's kind of how the opening of the hilarious house of frightenstein books yeah i'm gonna look that up afterwards Vincent starts doing the narration welcome where the sun don't shine (laughs) it's not vincent price's behind (laughs) hey it starts out kind of like that you you uh you used to watch milton the monster right oh yeah that was a big one for me when i was really young i didn't watch it as a kid I did as a kid. That was my favorite show. I didn't show. Even know about it until I was working at Disney Studios. Mm-hmm. And um, 
and this guy put up a flyer. He said, bad animation night. And he had <laughs> the drawings from Milton the Monster. I'm like, hey, what is this show? It's like, it's Milton the Monster. It's horrible. I'm like, it looks like it'd be good. <laughs> what do you mean, amazing? So I went to the thing he was showing at. I'm like, wow, this cartoon's awesome. Yeah, what are you talking about, horrible? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, why does he think this is horrible? I think it's, it's good. Yeah, it's great. But, yeah. To each their it's own. Awesome. But oh, got this. Do you know Pete? Oh Langford? yeah, who? The, Pete. He used to be at Monster Palooza. Pete and Police. I think that's how you say his last name. I don't think I know. Him. The Devil's Workshop is his Instagram. Hmm. That's but, a, yeah. That's a great. That's great. The uh, old classic Top Stone Vampire Lady, Girl yeah. Vampire. Yeah, the guy who who made all those and drew that art. That guy was amazing. Yeah. I just watching it on youtube have you seen have you seen that I, I probably talked about this with you last time but the the guy who was doing a history of all the top stone masks on youtube and he stopped doing oh. them oh was that the, yeah i think i i think i copied all those it was it called the world of top stone or something i think so yeah thought? yeah and he talked kind of like this yeah yeah it was so great it's like i wish he would have kept going with it because that was like my favorite youtube series speaking of a shock monster here's my shock monster yeah i love the shock monster yeah it's like so iconic like, yeah it's so classic yeah and that was a, that was from the top stone that yeah. that's where it originated was the top stone crappy ass mask which which is great yeah like here's here's the guy's drawings Yes, and the drawings were better than the masks. <laughs> I know. Look at how good that drawing. Like his drawings were amazing. Yes, and then you got the mask, and it was like you're a kid, so it didn't matter because you thought it was still cool. Yeah, how much were those? Like a dollar fifty or something. Back yeah, then? they were like peanuts. They got this werewolf top stone. Oh, is that a pin? Yeah, oh, cool. I got it at Monster Palooza. Oh, check out this weird rubber. So I went to Sun of Monster Palooza. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford a booth this year or the last year for Sun of because, like, it's always summertime when you got to pay. And I'm like, oh, shit, I ain't getting enough sales in the air conditioner bills. Yeah, all my I know, right? So I just went there this year to hang out with friends, but I found this guy there. Well, that's <laughs> nice. <so> weird. <laughs> hey, Jack, make a dream. Give me some candy. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool yeah i haven't done a I haven't done a monster palooza in a, since the pandemic it's just such hard work man this is yeah i know it's like well, hard man the older you get to haul all that shit in there and sit there for 10 and hours people, a day or whatever and they're like on my life feed you should come out here to connecticut yeah <laughs> and i'm like uh you know how hard that is and how expensive that is? Yeah. It would be cool to hang out with you. And I'm like, okay, well, pay for my plane ticket yeah. and a booth and a hotel. <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't got the money to do that. Yeah. That's that's like almost 2000 bucks right off the bat just to fly to a show and do something like that. Yep. Yep. What is Damn that? Hang alone to my little friend. That's cool. <laughs> it's a bat. <laughs> oh wow you see it that's creepy mouth. yeah that's... there's a pee pee unless it's a girl <laughs> look at it from the back that's amazing uh, wow that is amazing just think that would bite you and turn you into dracula <laughs> maybe <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe in dracula <laughs> i don't believe Ooh. in dracula's <laughs> When I was a kid, I thought I saw Frankenstein in my closet one night when I was going to sleep, but it was just uh, my clothes, <laughs> <laughs> the, way, the way they were hanging. <laughs> but I was like staring, even like three years ago when we went trick-or-treating by my mom's, I was driving down the street by myself to leave. There's a horse ranch at the end of the street. I swear to God, I saw the creepiest witch just like hovering there. I'm like, what the fuck? What is that? And what was it? And it was just—it was a horse. Oh but wow! Because <laughs> it was so dark, 
and you couldn't see anything and this horse just looked like a witch wow and i was like oh my god that's freaking me out yeah. oh it's a horse <laughs> you got witches on the brain no i don't know why there's a you there's a name frankenstein i never even used to draw frankenstein really until after 2000 yeah right that's that look was... at all my earlier art it's yeah. like this weird amputees and <laughs> stuff with bandages yeah <laughs> and now a, all i draw is frankenstein there's a thing there's a name for for that uh, i forget i always forget the name of of people that see things patterns and things for saying uh, oh. i forget the name of it it's like a condition to where you can see it's like oh, seeing yeah. stuff in clouds and and I think it's, uh like blind <laughs> <laughs> that could be it too <laughs> i had to go get my i had to go get a new driver's license for my birthday like two weeks ago uh, and, and this is this is me at the, at the place well first of all when i got my first license i didn't know how to spell my middle name michael <laughs> i didn't want to spell it michelle so i just wrote mike <laughs> so i brought in my birth certificate which was so old the lady's looking at it, she's like do we accept these anymore? And she's like, this says Mike. And I'm like, I didn't know how to spell my name back then because I didn't write Michael ever. And she just started laughing. She's like, okay. Well, Eric hey, Mike just... Piggers. Yeah. It doesn't flow, does it? Rolls off the top. So. Oh, my God. He's like, oh, it looks like you got to do an eye test. And I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. So I'm like this okay do it with both eyes and then i could do it but barely and she's like cover one eye up and i'm like oh my god <laughs> uh eh, eh. oh wait no i think it's a d and then i'm like hold on wait i'm like i knew i should have taken a shower and washed the eye boogers out of my eyes <laughs> i kept doing that the whole test on both sides and then by the time i'm done i'm like oh my god i bet you i failed and i'm like how did i do and she's like oh well you got some right <laughs> You barely fat. Do you, you don't wear glasses? Well, no. I mean, I have glasses, but I need them. I just haven't. Got, I've never gotten checked for them. I've never, I never like worn them driving because it, it just seems like it makes it harder. Mm -hmm. Like when I was working my last job at Disney, like doing cleanup, which is like the final drawings where you got to be super precise. Mm -hmm. And so they got rid of us in 2002 and switched to computers. And then for some reason, they're like, we're going to try and do a 2D feature again. So they did Princess and the Frog like eight years later. Mm -hmm. So in those eight years, I remember the first day I went back and then I'm like, oh, my God, I can't even I can't even see the, the paper very good. Wow. And like, Better go down to the, the store and buy some of those reading glasses. That's what I so use. I, I had to use reading glasses. And I'm like. Oh my god, I'm really going blind. <laughs> I know. I need to get some. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to. I just don't want to deal with it. It's just more another expense, more time <laughs> to go do something, taken away from trying to earn a living here, and I just keep I putting it off for like ten years now. It's been. I, so I'm seriously come up with something that they'll just like fix your eyes. Like we can fix your eyes and your bald head. Yeah, <laughs> just take this pill. Yeah, your hair will grow out your eyes. <laughs> and your palms. <laughs> oh man. Wow. What else could I show you in here? Yeah, Let's I know. See. We're getting we're I don't want to <clears throat> keep you too long. So you, I know you I know you have stuff <laughs> oh. to do, but uh if you have any I, don't have stuff to do. I thought you were I'm an artist. <laughs> you just sit around and draw all day. I don't even do that. <laughs> I only draw when I'm inspired. <laughs> Did you ever get this at McDonald's, Ronald? No, that's great. <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. Like, he introduces it. Hi, boys and girls. And then they start playing, like, creepy sound effects. How old is this? Let's see. 70s? This, uh, might be the 80s. A friend of mine that worked at, at Disney on Beauty and the Beast, he actually tried out to be Ronald McDonald. I think he was in the top... 10 wow choices and i was like wait you mean they use different ones i always thought it was the same guy and he's like oh no they change them out every now and then <laughs> like you want to see something really creepy look at the very first ronald mcdonald yeah Willard, 
not. Yeah, it's so got, disturbing. Like, a pup for a nose. So and a weird. Box on his head is like, wow, that's really like who? What art company came up with that idea? That looks <laughs> terrible. You know that Frankenstein I could see behind your head. The uh, the uh, I think it's oh. a Glenn Strange. Yeah, that's the one I'm doing the shirt of right now. Oh, really? That's like but one of my. That's one of my. But it's bigger side. That's so cool. That's one of my favorite. That came in a honeycomb box, I believe. Oh, yeah. And it was oh, glow in the dark. It had glow in the dark on it. It was kind of rough. Yep. You could feel it. And, uh, oh, my God, that was my fa- one, like one of my favorite Frankenstein so here, posters. I'll do a little spit. Uh, all you people watching this. Okay. Go out and buy this shirt, but you got to buy it by this sun. Oh, wait. It won't work because Sunday's a cutoff. You're showing this next week, right? No, no. It's show- <laughs> It's uh, Wednesday. It's going to drop Wednesday. This Wednesday. This- Oh, wow. That's great. <laughs> so that's one of the shirts. So basically, if you buy either this one. Uh, or the theater, I love the color, man. So cool. Colors, man. The colors. <laughs> it's great. I love it. So you either get that one, screw loose, or you could get this cramp. Oh, man. That's purple, awesome. Purple. That's great. Or, or Lily. Yeah, that's great too. Those are the ones that you can um, get entered for a chance to win that signed Butch Patrick. Oh, cool! But I also got like, here I'll show you all these. So people, hats. people go and buy. You know, if you're listening to this, go and po- support. Yeah, you got to support artists. Independent, right? independent We're artists. All We're all broke, trying to scrape by. So if you buy yeah, our you stuff, how much toilet paper cost? <laughs> the paper is expensive. <laughs> Last month I had to use my hand. <laughs> you know what was funny about toilet paper before I show you some or my shirt you could wipe your ass on. <laughs> Back when the pandemic, remember when people were hoarding toilet paper? Mm-hmm. The one day I was at school to pick up Leia, and these people are complaining, Oh, there's no toilet paper on the shelves. And then this lady's like, Oh, I saw toilet paper at the dollar store, and she's like, I'm not using that toilet paper. That's from the dollar store. <laughs> like, who gives a shit? Yeah. You're doing like, what? And throwing it in the toilet. <laughs> if you're stuck at home because of the pandemic, you don't even have to do that. Just go in the shower and wash your crack off. <laughs> it's fancy people. So here's some shirts. I, I These ones I barely have any leftover. So this one I did for Halloween. That's great. Trick oh, or treat yeah. Pack. This one of there's me, Uncle Piggers up yeah. in the window. I have that one, I think, or I had it at one point. Oh, this, this one's brand new, isn't it? Halloween. Oh man, you this kill me, it. man. Oh, it's so good. I love that. This ghost. This is actually one of my my um, props I use at Halloween. I just went out and took a photo of it. I love that. How'd you get it? To, uh, how did you did you just take it into Photoshop and crank up yeah. the contrast? Yep. It looks so good. I've done that with a few designs. And then this one's on right here. I'll you gotta fold this one out so you can see all the lovely display. Because I like doing these spook show ones. Yeah, those so are I great. Can... I love it. In there. Yeah. And this climb out. Man, so cool. So yeah, that's None of them were flying off the shelves. So really, I think yeah, it's been, it's been slow. Hey, you covered covered the camera up (laughs) for a second. It's it's been slow all over the all over with art sales. Yeah, but your stuff is is so great. At least I'll die a happy person. That's right. I might not I might not be rich, but I'll go to my grave being content on what I did on this. That's true. Yeah. Yep, that's the. I mean, that's how much. That's the most important thing, I think. Definitely, and that's also uh, that just shows how much we we love what we do is that we're willing to put up with that kind of lifestyle in order to do it. You know, I know, and I don't even know how I how I mean, like, what causes us to become like that? Is it just something that gets in your skin when you're young and you're like? You just love it so much that you can't stop. Well, I mean, I guess it's the same with if you're a guitar player. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just having a, a passion for one of the arts, you know. Yeah, it seems like artists are generally like that. Poor. What? Poor. Poor and, 
they're poor and they're happy because they do what they like and then they're depressed because they're poor <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much and they're on drugs because they can't cope with being poor right Richie? <laughs> right very good you're correct mr piggles like my big chiclet teeth mm. <laughs> They give out chiclets for Halloween candy. Let me pop up my teeth. <laughs> Do you have any creepy grandparent stories? <laughs> Do, oh, my, well, my, you know, this, my grandfather used to put on the Topstone caveman mask and caveman feet and then turn the lights off in the house and chase us around the house in the dark with a flashlight and turn it on. He'd like get in front of us and turn the light on. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and how old was he? He was probably only like 40, huh? Yeah, probably thinking about it, he probably was because I was probably like five years old. Yeah. So think about it. In his 40s, I'm, probably. I'm technically a grandpa. I'm 61. Yep. Even though I'm not a grandpa. But... I am a grandpa and I'm 56 almost. Yeah. But it, I, I remember going to our great grandma's house once. And it just like you remember, I was going to there. It always sm smells weird, mm -hmm. like mothballs or mm -hmm. something. <laughs> and we we had just got McDonald's food to eat lunch, and then they like called her, "Come on in, Grandma." I I, I don't. I'm sure she didn't have a table that was made out of a door, <laughs> but but it seemed like a door on a horse. Those horse things, like if you had a dude buzz sawing. <laughs> And I just remember her sitting down and she props up her leg over my knee. And she's like, can I put my leg on your knee? I've got a bad leg. <laughs> and I just remember being creeped out, like eating my french fries. Like, <laughs> oh. oh my God. Yeah, I think she had a parrot in there too. Who knows what the parrot I, was saying. I, I got a good story. I got a good story for you. When I was really, really little, and, and this is in, in San Pedro, San Pedro's, weird there's like definitely where uh, is that anyways it's at the end of the uh um uh, 110 freeway the south south all the way down by long beach and all that terminal island and the harbor and yeah. all that um definitely a weird there's a lot of these weird a lot of weird when i was growing up weird characters my mom tells a story about this crazy lady they called the rabbit lady who used to raise rabbits and every halloween she would I maybe I told I don't know if I told you this last time, but she would yeah. wear she would wear rubber gloves and put grapes in them so they're all squishy, like squish wow. the grapes up and then like shake the kids' hands when she gave them gave them candy. She was and she was like kind of crazy, but um, I thought you were gonna say she would say feel my eyeball. <laughs> it was weirder than that. Uh, she anyway, my mom used to take me to this woman, this old lady named Miss Monahan. And, and it was like this dark, creepy house. And I remember going in, it was all dark, really dark wood. And we would go and she, she had a, a skeleton key and she's like, would you, you want to see the skeleton key? I would always want to see the skeleton key. So it was like an old key that had like a skeleton on the back of it. And she had it in a little case and she would bring it out. I remember in this dark room, she would bring it out and open it up and she'd be like, Hi, Chad. I'm the skeleton key. And she would like do the voice of this little skeleton key talking to me. And I just thought it was so cool. <laughs> so weird. Totally what? weird. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, Chad. Let me open up your anus. <laughs> oh, they <laughs> put some grapes I squished. Now you had to go ruin it. You had to go too far. <laughs> you ruined my memory. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> My innocent memory. <laughs> it's, now it's tarnished. <laughs> tarnished. From the wicked old witch. <laughs> well, you can see this drawing right here. Uh-huh. So I did this a year and a half ago mm -hmm. for halfway to Halloween. Because I love just drawing old hag witches. Mm -hmm. Like to me, this is this is Halloween. Yeah. Tap definitely. Black cats, witches, and uh haunted houses, skeletons. Yep. Not, not pirates. <laughs> no. But uh, so I made shirts of it and didn't even do that good. But this is the one shirt Slash really loved. He was like, dude, if you give me that shirt, I'll wear it. How'd on you? Our video we're doing. No way. 
So I made this shirt. I had to like rush it, drive it to his house. And then he didn't wear it in the video, but he's like, oh, I wore it for a bunch of promos. So this t-shirt was probably on about 25 to 30 magazine covers. Wow. So did, did, it, that. did it equal sales? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> nope. I guess because no one knew where to. Probably. You know, it's not like your name's on it, so. No. And that, I don't know. I don't know if that really works a lot of the times either. Because, like, even when James Hetfield wore one of my shirts on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, and I thought, oh, this is going to help. Nope. No, nothing. I even brought the cover to Comic Con one year and I said, Comic Con exclusive, this shirt. And people would be like, huh? Why? And I'm like, look, Hetfield's wearing it on Rolling Stone cover. And they're like, okay. <laughs> oh, and man. They just buy a different shirt. <laughs> that sucks. I don't think I've ever had anything really go like viral. viral. This shirt did pretty good last when I put it out. This yeah that's nice but but it didn't do anything like well i'm selling thousands of t-shirts right isn't it it's like that's always the hope that this time when you release something at least for me it's like this time when i release something it's going to be the one that that yeah. goes crazy yeah. and and it never happens <laughs> it's more like well, a steady trickle i know a guy who did a shirt like that and um he did like when toys R Us closed he did a t-shirt like of Jeffrey as a skeleton and mm -hmm. it looked kind of like the Ramones logo sorta. Mm -hmm. And it was like a it's a cool design. And it went viral. I think he said he sold like four thousand shirts in what? one weekend. Whoa. <laughs> and part of me is like, I mean that's awesome. But part of me is like, I don't want that. <laughs> Could you imagine <laughs> turning on your phone or your emails and all of a sudden you just see like sale, 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 sale to the point where you're like my god how am i gonna even do all these sales yeah There's but so many of them i know that would be a it would be a lot of work but it would be worth it <laughs> if you think about it, it would be like oh i hope i got everybody yeah yeah that is a lot that is a lot yeah that would I can't, be I, I could never imagine just seeing this go like this <laughs> and it doesn't stop it just keeps going and you're like wait is this real yeah <laughs> This doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's that would be a lot. You, you need to, you need help. You need some kind of help. Like if I, well, I, another shirt that did good too was when I did that Lemmy T-shirt. Mm -hmm. like, I think I sold like a hundred of those. Oh wow, which was a lot for me. Mm -hmm. this yeah, that's cool. And, uh, I mean, that's yeah. a. That's what you got to do, kind of. To I think it's I like know. you have to do. People don't care about Frankenstein. Yeah, but... you got to do like celebrities it's and all shit. Stuff that I like. Yeah, like, I don't want to be that artist. <laughs> That's not who I am. Yes. I don't draw that. That's why when Butch Patrick was like, "Oh, can you?" Like even when Metallica first contacted me, they're like, "Oh, maybe you could do a, a drawing of us." I'm like, mm, I don't. I don't like doing that. I don't draw. We'll draw like monsters. And I'm like, eh, eh no. <laughs> I'm like, can you just let me draw something that I want to draw? Oh, yeah, okay. So they let me just think up something, which usually is the better choice. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. If they, yeah, yeah, like yeah. this. I mean, it's, I guess I even had to look at somebody else's drawing kind of butch just to get an idea in my head, like, oh, I wish I could find my sketches I did of it first. Cause like the first one, I'm like, Oh my God, that looked horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one's great. I mean, you, you can tell it's him and it's still in your style, which is cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It looks just like me. I love <laughs> you stupid prick. I love that color, that color green for darn, skin. Darn, darn, <laughs> darn, darn. <laughs> Can't draw me, but you can draw Frankenstein. <laughs> Oh, here, here comes Marilyn. Wait, here's Marilyn. Hi, I'm Marilyn. I'm the pretty <laughs> one of the family. <laughs> Nobody likes me because I'm so ugly. <laughs> it's the Eric Pickers puppet show. <laughs> puppet show. You really, you, you, you really have to see this episode on YouTube, everybody. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
Well, just to even see. Oh, here's something fun I did. Did you ever see these at the dollar store? No, oh, yeah. So it's just those blanks. So I just bought a bunch and I would draw. Oh, them. how cool! That's great. Like in my own. I have some Frankenstein ones somewhere. I think they're downstairs. That's a great idea. Yeah, that's the thing about being an artist. You don't know when you're going to be inspired or what's going to inspire you. Yep. You just got to always be ready. Yeah. That's why I always leave paper everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere in my car. I like the pendant up there to the, uh, or not the, not the, the flag, the, what do you call it? Pendant, uh, on the ceiling, the, the triangular flag thing. Yeah. Pendant. Is that what yeah. they're called? Yeah. Salem with flyers. Check out this old die cut. This thing's freaking cool. That is really cool. This guy, these are expensive too. This guy's stuff is awesome. Yeah. That's like, great. Look. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. I forgot what his name is. Damn, those are great. But the Frankenstein one's the best. Yeah. There's a guy on uh, Instagram that made like these of that and it has a whole display it's really cool huh. for a hundred bucks like well, this is the jack davis one but that's really cool but somebody made one of this too huh that's awesome found this at the halloween fun house it looks like the crypt keeper from right crypts mm, yeah i bet you it is hey, maybe we should talk about big daddy rock did you ever meet him no, no. We talked about it before. You met him, right? Wait, look. Here's that Burger Chef and Jeff art. I grabbed it from this ring. Ah, oh, how cool. <laughs> yeah, I, he actually wanted me to animate a rat thing short for him. We had, like, lunch. Wait a minute. You know, what? I'll show you his phone number. <laughs> you... you... <laughs> You I used still to have his phone number in this drawing he sent me. You used to do animation, so why don't you animate your stuff? Well, I don't. I didn't really do animation. I did. Well, I did animate my own short, short cartoon, but it's just so much work. Yeah. Like, plus I'm not the greatest animator. All right. But here's my Big Daddy Roth book of stuff. So. Back when I was at Disney on, um, well, here, I'll show stuff while nobody wants to look at my face. When I was working at Disney, I think it was on Rescuers Down Under, maybe. Mm -hmm. He contacted me because he's like, hey, maybe you could do a rat thing short. I'm going to be in Valencia or I have to go pick up some knives from Von Dutch. Maybe <laughs> we could get, to, get together. I'll bring you your artwork you bought and then we could talk. So we went to lunch. We got hamburgers. Can you see the art while I'm talking? Yeah, yeah, it looks great. So, um, so cool. We had a real interesting lunch. Like me and my friends went with them. Uh huh. Now I was trying to chew his brain, just like, like, hey, Big Daddy, what inspired you? And I thought he's gonna say, oh man, or Basil Wolverton or stuff like that. And he's like, the Korean War. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Are you serious? Okay. Yeah. The Korean. <laughs> He had mayonnaise on his goatee from the hamburger. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was this stuff. I don't know. But I was like, that's kind of a weird answer. Yeah, it is a I weird. Think I, I think I, well, I gave his, his widow, Eileen, a drawing I drew the day he died, like a signed print. Mm -hmm. She put it in the Rat Think Museum up in Utah where they, where he, he lived. And I told her that. And she's like, oh, that sounds like Ed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But where's the did I get those? Oh, wait, let's see. Here's some personal letters he sent me. Wow. Okay. If people freeze frame that, they can read it. No, yeah, we better make sure there's no <laughs> there's no phone numbers. Although I don't even know if that would work anyway. Yeah. Because this is like probably geez, 1989, Jeez. 90. But he called me like one Saturday morning, like at 5 a.m. <laughs> I remember I woke up and I'm like, what the fuck? Who's calling me so early? <laughs> He's like, hey, Eric, it's me, Big Daddy. And I'm like, I almost was like, can you call back? It's 5 a.m. But I'm like, oh, I better not. It's Big Daddy Roth. Yeah. <laughs> Why did he call you that early? 
because he was probably three hours ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's, uh, he's probably up. <laughs> but I got some stuff signed in here too. I wow. got more stuff. Fine. Oh, here's the. So the day he died, I was di- working in the basement at Disney Studios, and my friend came over. He's like, "Did you see the newspaper, the obituary today?" And I'm like, "No, why?" And he's like, "Big Daddy Roth died." So he gave me this. I was like so bummed. I went in my art room or in my room there and I just sketched out this little. Uh oh. What? Yeah, you're here. You're there. Art went on low power now. Oh, okay. But yeah, he. I just went in my art room, sketched something out, and I was like just sitting there like all bummed because it's weird when people like that pass away because they're kind of like your heroes. Yeah. And for some reason, like you don't think they're going to die. Yeah, so right. Forever. Same with musicians. Yep. But or artists. Yep. But I guess we all got to go sometime, right? This is true. Here's my 15 year statue from Disney. Wow. Here's That's my cool. Black. Here's a cool thing Jim McPherson made. Oh, wow. Got like headgear on too. Like it's pulling his mouth open. Here's me when I was on the Monsters episode. See, it was a special, <laughs> a special episode where Uncle Piggers came on the show. It's That'd be, that would be great to edit, to shoot some footage, edit you in some of the old shows. Well, I did, I did like this for an art show at Mystic Museum. I'm like, this is the day the Monsters came to visit me when I had to live in an iron lung because I was sick. <laughs> That's great. And they brought me this TV set. Because Butch and, and Herman couldn't come, so I got to watch them on the TV set. That's so funny. Except I think the one I turned in had even more detail on it. That's hilarious. I like, comics in my hand and stuff. Well, okay, the, okay, okay. We, we got to get going here. I got to get, right. <laughs> I got to eat. Trying to, trying to see if there's any one last thing I could show. Okay, one last thing. I appreciate you showing me everything. It's amazing. This isn't even all of it. I know. What's left in here? Oh, well, maybe I'll go ahead on this one. I had to do a Tiki art show. So my friend Chris the Creep, he's an artist too. Mm-hmm. He, he prints all my t-shirts at the place he works at. But oh, cool. he's been helping me out doing these art panels. Mm-hmm. So oh, I got to do a, a creepy, um, spooky Tiki show. Can you do a piece? And I'm like, oh, what should I do? So here's what I did. Oh, <laughs> your phone just died. <laughs> I guess we're going to... Wait, there we go. <laughs> I, I think I... <laughs> yeah, I, I was I, about I, to end the episode because I was like... See my brain? This is what happened when you're old. <laughs> I need my Jericho. But see, here's the piece I did. Oh, that's Can, awesome. Oh, it's Lily in a grass skirt, the bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein's tiki bar. Oh my god, that's so cool. Got, like, check out the werewolf tiki head. And then he's got some more tiki stuff. So that, man. cool, man. I love it. I love it. I love your work. I lo- love your work. I'm a huge I'm your, one I did I'm your number one fan. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna start drawing cute cats. Yeah, now you'll make maybe make some money. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I'll be rich. I'll be like, damn, I wasted all those years drawing this stuff <laughs> when I should have just been drawing cute. Well, here's a, here's a story too. So I don't know if you know about Instagram and their crappy ass algorithms. Yeah, but, I so I would say I've got 60,000 people and I average usually like a hundred likes to 150 likes. Mm-hmm. Two weeks ago, all of a sudden I posted this girl wearing my stuff and i'm like looking at it 15 seconds go by and it says 25 likes i'm like what the hell 50 likes she got ended up getting like almost 1600 likes next post 2000 likes next post 2500 likes for a whole entire week it was like a thousand to two thousand likes i'm like what the hell's going on this is weird and then i'm like which post is going to be the one that sends me back to a hundred likes <laughs> <laughs> and then a week later hundred likes i'm like what the hell? i know it's yeah it's geared I to like, 
I don't even understand what happened at all. You have to, they, 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 what the algorithm wants you to keep posting the same type of picture. Really? I think, yeah. I think that's the way people do it. It's like if it's a woman wearing your shirt, do well, another most one. Most of the time, that it doesn't work. Hmm. Yeah, that's so weird. You gotta. You, you have to see what about those pictures caught the algorithm. What's different from other ones you well, posted? I thought maybe it was the hashtag, and I'm like, so I just copied the hashtags and would use that again, and it didn't. Hmm. You know? So I was like, okay, maybe I was just like. But it, it actually felt like for a whole week, like, wow, I feel like I'm getting some respect for what I do right. finally. No, nah, <laughs> it's just the algorithm. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just something went out of whack. They're probably like, uh, let's release him from shadow band prison for a week and fuck <laughs> with his head. I'm sure that's what it was. There was probably somebody, well, I don't even know if human beings work at Instagram, do they? I don't, I don't, I, from what I've heard, they don't even know how the algorithm works, the people that wrote it. It's like it's this thing that just operates on its own, and they don't even really know what they're doing, what what it's doing. They don't know what it's doing. They just know that it it pushes popular images to the top of the feed for people. Well, I know I got banned from buying ads because I posted that one of Justine with blood all over her and a knife. Yeah, yeah, I've, well, I've... My bloody Mary shirt, but yeah. yeah, you never bought ads though, right? I, I was for a while um, testing it out, and then it, worked. it never really got me much uh, traction. And, and then at one point, it refused an ad because it yeah. was one of my pictures. <laughs> Somehow they thought it was bad, and I was just like, yeah. and, I, and I submitted it again because I'm like, this isn't what they're saying. There's nothing in it that's violent or anything. It's a monster. And then it refused it again. I'm like, fuck this. I'm never going to buy ads on here ever <laughs> again, because you know, I'm trying to give you money and I'm, you're going to make me yeah. work. Screw you guys. So I just never did it again. Well, you plus know? it's like, I always was like, does it even work if you pay him? Like, cause it never I really worked for me. I think it, I think it, people that see your post, but I don't know if they're like really seeing it like, Oh, I'm going to go buy some stuff from this person. I think you have to spend like at least 10 grand or something in order to make it worth oh, your shit. while because it has to like hit a ton of people for that's my understanding. I'm not, you know, I can't say for sure. Cause I've never spent 10 grand, but I bet you, if you spend a lot of money, you probably see a, a, a big rise in sales, but it's one of those things where it takes money to make money. You know? Or it could be like those people who spend ten thousand dollars on lotto tickets for a billion dollars and lose. <laughs> True, could be. <laughs> okay, so t where tell tell me where people can find your stuff and um. Okay, let me go show you. Hopefully, my pants don't fall off. That would be a good way to end the show. That would be. Uncle Piggers loses his pants, and you get to see my undies. <laughs> okay, so basically. Just Buy my stuff. Tell me when you can see the Toxic Tunes logo. I can see it. Toxic you go Tunes. Go to Toxic Tunes. T O X I C T O like Toxic and Cartoons. You can buy either patches, stickers, Uncle Pigger Spook House DVD, Monster Mask, Scare Fresheners, Button Packs. Here's some of those panels too that me and me and my friend did. So they're limited. Signed and numbered. They're all painted on wood boards. Those are awesome, man. Or you can just get a... What else do I sell? Most of the time I sell just t-shirts. Yeah, like, but you got all kinds of other good stuff. Yeah, but... what? And what about your Instagram? <clears throat> oh, Instagram's just Toxic Tunes also. Okay, ToxicTunes.com and Toxic Tunes on Instagram. That's where... But, if, but Halloween, if you are a fan of Alfred E. Newman... We could get that shirt on Halloween. And the way I do shirts, I only do them for two weeks. You get two weeks to pre-order. And then I print whatever people pre-order and mail it out. Because I'm not rich. I don't have money to just print up shirts and hope they sell. Yeah. Same with this Ghastly ones. This one should probably do good because they have a pretty good following. Yeah. Or the Hatbox Ghost. The Hatbox Ghost is also one of the shirts. Yeah, I love that one. Beware of the Hitchhiking Ghosts. It's Hatbox Ghost. Awesome. So it was those three. Oh, it was one other one that was popular. 
what the hell did else was... I already like when I I don't know if you work this way but I start off the year I put 12 months of folders into one thing that says 2023 calendar of merch each month I throw in shirt ideas that I think I would do mm -hmm. and if they stick they stick sometimes I'll draw new stuff and then I'll just change it oh yeah this was the other one too oh Where yeah driving the hot rod yep but yeah, yeah, I just basically worked that way. Back when I had money, I would print up T-shirts. Yeah, and then just keep them till they sold out. It's hard to hard to make money at that though. Yeah, especially nowadays. Yeah, because even the stuff I've had in stock just sits there too. Well, I'm tired of doing discounts all the time. Shouldn't have to always do discounts. You're an artist for God's sakes. I know. Well, you don't, ever, go to, you don't go to conventions and ask for discounts from celebrities. Yeah. You don't go to the grocery store and say, oh, here, can I get a discount on this hot dog? <laughs> it says it's $10. Can I give you $2? <laughs> well, everybody, go go to ToxicTunes.com. At least buy a t-shirt or something. Yeah, or a sticker. Sticker, yeah. Sticker, patches, t-shirts. I got lots. Oh, I didn't even show you my patches real quick. I know. I gotta. I gotta talk to you about where you get your patches made because I want to get some patches done. That's so cool. These are all different. I've got some Lemmy ones. <sighs> trick or treat. Trick or treat witch. Man, those are so cool. All right, I'm gonna talk to you after. But oh man, I love that. Okay, I'm gonna talk to you after. Don't hang up. No, we're gonna we're gonna end this. Well, don't hang you up. You know me. I'm kind of stupid on the phone, so. Just don't do anything. Don't do anything and I'll stop it. So the last thing you got to do is just say goodbye to the audience in whatever way you want. Just say goodbye. Well, the only way you can say goodbye is. Oh, I can't hear it. And everybody. Has... <laughs> Wait, you're supposed to say. Happy Halloween. <laughs> I'll just say it myself. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween, everybody. For this episode, it was very fun doing this. I love talking about Halloween, as you could tell. So, yes. Thank you, Jet, for having me on once again. Thank and you. Everybody out there, stay spooky and have a happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Happy Halloween, everybody. Thanks for listening. <laughs>